The future of Baldur's Gate hangs in the balance. Will you be the hero and save it from looming darkness? Or will the city crumble under your influence? Explore the vastness of the Forgotten Realms, overcoming its challenges however you choose. This journey is yours to make. Its path and your party shaped by each and every decision. You brought us this far. So how shall we proceed? Fight. Outthink. Aid. Manipulate. Steal. Bargain. The world and its denizens will react in kind. With 46 subclasses and over 600 spells at your disposal, experience true RPG freedom. As a solo adventurer or with a party of friends, become a force for good or sow chaos in your wake. In Baldur's Gate 3, you decide. everybody and welcome to episode 2 of our very special Baldur's Gate cast play D&D with High Rollers. I'm the Dungeon Master Mark Sherlock Humes and I'm joined once again by our wonderful cast of guests. Can we just get a quick reintroduction to who you are and who you're playing? Real rapid fire round. Go! Starting with Theo. My name is Theo Solomon and I'm playing Will Ravenguard, the Blade of Frontiers. Oi! 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 My name is Samantha Bayout, and I'm playing Carlite, the Demon's Bane. Oh. My name's Jennifer, and I am playing Shadowheart. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Deborah Wild, and I play Lazel of Crash Clear. No introductions needed. Oh. <laughs> Damn. Hello, I'm, no, hello, I'm Neil Newborn, I'm playing a Saharian, I'm wearing exactly the same clothes, I make no apologies for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Tim Downey and I'm playing Gail Dacarius, the Wizard of Waterdeep. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Boz, uh, thank you very much for joining us once again as we continue and hopefully wrap up our little adventures uh, here in your second game of D&D for many of you. Some, from, some, some of you are more experienced, but for some of you it's your second ever game. <laughs> Very exciting. We are also joined with, I'm just going to have a stick her head in, because right. there's no intro for this one, <laughs> since that, right? but we are also joined by another special friend. Sickly, it's like back to back. Uh, who are you? Go, come in here and say, oh, like, um, I'm Amelia Tyler. I play the uh, narrator of Baldur's Gate 3. Woo! And you will see me later, but just not right at the beginning of the episode. Yeah, you've got to go back to your chair. Go, go back to your 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 stalking chair. Um, so, uh, let me give you a little recap on what happened in our last episode. Uh, you are all traveling. You were all traveling through the wilds of the Sword Coast. You had made camp, and when you awoke in the morning, your companion and the sort of one that you know your destiny is connected to, these, these mind flare tadpoles connecting your minds and somehow being prevented from transmor uh, transmorphing and ceremorphosis, uh, Tav, this champion, this warrior that you've been traveling with, or mage, um, was afflicted by some strange spell that was overtaking their body, um, and you knew, uh, thanks to some detective arcade detective work from Gale. You detected that it was coming from very, very far away. It was very rare and powerful magic. And then you were suddenly attacked by these strange uh, spirits and, and glass knights and, and strange amalgamations like experiment, experiments gone wrong. Um, you managed to fight them off and with a little aid from Elminster uh, you learned a bit more that the source of this magic, this spell, was coming from a place called Athkatla, a city in the nation of Arm, far to the south. Uh, Elminster tells Teleported you to the city of uh, to the city of Athkatla, and then you have arrived and split off in a various number of ways to try and locate the source of this magic, put a stop to it, save Tav, and then return to Baldur's Gate to complete your destiny. Um, as we know, because we're all playing the game, we all know where it's going to go eventually. You have, to, you have to get back. Everyone dies. Um, just as a little point of warning, there may be some minor spoilers for things that happen in Baldur's Gate Three, especially in Act One, uh, especially with the, the various characters and things like that um, but hopefully not too much uh, so we can jump right into that as well um, and that my friends is where we're actually going to pick straight back up uh, no big fancy intro this time because we are uh, going to pick up 
with some of the cast after you've split off. I believe we have. Gale and Will uh, had sort of done a little bit of research, cast some spells to try and track down this source of magic, maybe learning about the kind of powers that are in play here in the city and where they may be able to help you. Uh, still in the city gates district, um, but Will, uh, but uh, Gale, sorry, had snuck off to do some sneaky arcane magic, which is <laughs> very naughty in this city. Oh. Um, we then have um, Asterion and Karlak having headed to the docks, uh, perhaps pursuing some illegal, allegedly, uh, allegedly illegal. nefarious <laughs> contacts uh, to maybe try and inquire what they may know. Um, and then finally, the oddest gal pal date of all time, <laughs> uh, we had Lizelle and Shadowheart head to Joaquin's <laughs> Promenade, a trading market uh, where they've encountered the Adventurer's Mart, the weirdest and budget uh, adventuring <laughs> shop of the sort of uh, in Faerun. Uh, they've met the imp Bing Bong, um, and and uh, they are they har harassed harassed a gnome um, into learning more about what was going on in the city, and ended up buying two tickets to a tourist attraction. Yes. Um, and we we did you guys last. We're going to come back to you guys in a little bit, uh, but I want to pick up with some of our other groups, especially Karlak and Asterian. Um, you guys make your way into the docks district of Afkatla. The docks are sealed off by large towering stone walls. You can see that they, the docks themselves slope all the way down with these kind of ramps and stairways that lead down onto the surface of uh, the coast. And you can see that the river flows out here as well, and it is immense. There are ships with huge masts, sailing ships everywhere, a wooden jetty that kind of surrounds the southern portion of the city, really, like a huge chunk, this peninsula kind of sticks out um, and uh, drifts off into the sea. And you can see warehouses, you can see very fancy, uh, rich, uh, upper-class housing here. You can see taverns, you can see entertainment uh, establishments, shall we call them, gambling dens, brothels, that sort of thing. Uh, Gentle dance halls. Persons Club. Gentle Persons Club. <laughs> um, you can see traders, and it's very bustling. It's packed with people um, and when you guys arrive you encounter a site which I think the two of you would probably be somewhat familiar with having grown up as a sort of a street urchin in Baldur's Gate, I believe, Carlite, and then Asterion having lived in a bustling city and knowing the right types of people. Um, when you arrive, uh, you witness, you are witness to a chase currently taking place. Uh, you see, dressed in a sort of a purple hood, um, kind of wrapped around a very rant, like kind of homemade, maybe like knitted, mm -hmm. um, a dwarven girl. She's maybe about 14, but you can see the stocky frame of a dwarf, big curly ginger hair, um, looks like it might be dyed, um, uh, kind of like spilling out around her, like uh, out of her cloak, uh, big thick boots, and she is quite expertly parkouring over some of these warehouses and buildings whilst a pair of out of breath uh, guards like kind of like, you know, wearing breastplate and carrying yeah. halberds, are like yelling after her, there's a man and a woman um, and they're chasing after tin pot kind of lid helms, like, stop girl, and like you won't get away with this this time and they're chasing after it and the dwarven girl is like hopping over things kind of assassin's creed style sliding um but as she kind of is about to reach near you guys and maybe looks like it makes a mistake uh a cobblestone in the street comes loose and she goes tumbling down um kind of rolling into this thing slams into a cart um and seems to be quite badly injured just a bad fall basically um and it looks like these guards might quickly catch up on her and she kind of looks around and she's like hey any help here please uh, and she's kind of like looking around to the bypasses like for anybody to help her but a lot of people are like like turning away like you know aiming not to help her so what do you what do you guys want to do anything or is this you trying yeah. to avoid attention i'm going to i feel like you and i've adventured long enough and we're similarish not similarish people but we're both city people yes so i'm going to sort of like look from what we're watching and sort of look at Karlak and just give a little knowing nod eyebrow raise because I've already discussed obviously we've, we've discussed what we're here to do what we're here to do and this looks like maybe An opportunity. Yeah. Mm. so we're going to sort of do that so we both know we're on the same page sure. 
Is there anything like a big basket or like a wicker bar or something like that? Oh, absolutely, there would be. Yeah, there's like cool. uh, you can see that like you know this is a docks after all. There's likely fishing boats and things like that. Okay. So there's like baskets full of like kind of oily like uh, kind of almost like long eel-like fish. Okay. Um, they're scattered around everywhere. There's also crates, but they're like nailed shut. But they look like they're full of like trade goods. So they'd be full of like you know pack and straw and stuff so like that. I want to quickly just scan around to see if there's like an open something. Yeah, so that, that I'm going to yes. be, I'm sort of going to sort of point there, yeah, point yeah, there, yeah, yeah, point yeah. there, yeah. and then what I'm going to do is, as, well, as we assume that we know what we're talking about, <laughs> I'm going to walk past Karlak and the girl, mm. and and mindlessly sort of wander towards where the guards I know will be coming, mm -hmm. and just affect the the fop. Yeah. thing and just try and get in their way basically. Sure, sure, sure. No, yeah. physically, I mean. Okay, great. Yeah. So, uh, in that case, let's, and then Carl, like, what do you, in fact, actually, before actually we break any roll. I this one this time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is going Yeah, yeah. I was just going, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it looks like there's a couple of choices, like, let's if you wanted to... Tadpole. 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 App Tad or whatever. Uh, what, what's, tad. what's Tad? What's, what's Tad? Yeah. Um, you have seen this girl, like, Sarah's made these gestures. You've got a couple of options. If you want to find something to put her in, you can either basically empty out one of these wicker baskets full of these like oily kind of fish um, or you could try and rip off the lid of one of these crates yeah, which you know yeah like yeah probably is going to be yeah. totally doable I think right? me and oil and child yeah. and, and like you can oh, see this great combination with <laughs> you see this like dwarven <laughs> girl she's kind of got like this kind of like um, lilac coloured dress like big thick leather boots up to her thighs but like in, in like this big hood of like purple like knitted kind of like cloak looks almost like a rogue's hood if your grandma made it basically mm -hmm. um, and, she's got this big, and she's like limping it looks like she's twisted her ankle and she's like trying to, like get away people um, moving away from her or, or people are just trying to ignore her. her she's trying to blend in okay. but like people are just like well we don't want to get into trouble Actually, basically if there's, if there's space and whilst you're doing your thing and i'm walking past just as i sort of walk past the girl is she looking towards where Carla and i are yeah she's like kind of like she's like looking around and she's like please i, I swear i didn't do anything wrong like See, uh, have... they're just after me for no reason and she's like limping around because i have thieves camp yeah, Which I think mm. is a secret sign. It is a secret sign language of thieves. Yeah, yeah no, sort of how's your elbow? Yeah. yeah, and there's a lot of like cockney oh, slang of like you know, like you know, like oh, like you know, you'd say something like apples oh. and pears. Yeah, <laughs> darling. So you fell down at the fish market means just like yeah. oh, did a job go wrong and stuff. Oh, look like at that. the weather. Looks like it's going to be overcast in a second. Or something like yeah, whatever. <laughs> like that. Yeah, but, but what I was going to do is see if I can catch your attention by using these counts, something sure. along those lines, by indicating to Karlak. That is in girl look at my she's friend. all right go with yeah her. yeah go with her she's okay. okay and then let her do what she all right sure so there's a couple of things in play here the thieves can't you don't need to make a roll for because yep. it's something you can just do yep. and i would say let me i'm gonna roll i'm gonna make her a little roll here because she's a dummy <laughs> maybe <laughs> or maybe they're also stupid <laughs> something else. what is your passive perception as a star my passive perception is 13. 13. it's enough like you see she definitely clocks you mm. um and she thieves cans back to you just with hand signals mm. almost like sign language yep. um she will thieves can back to you like i don't know you but I don't have a choice. Uh, I'm gonna... And like something like that. Like uh, I might do the parting good luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she kind of like she scowls and like returns yeah, it to yeah. you. Um, but she starts limping towards Karlak. Um meanwhile, you're gonna try and like intercept these guys and kind of like distract them or Just like keep them in the way. I'm not gonna notice them because they're beneath me. Yeah, yeah. But, but I'm going is... to make sure that they accidentally get in my sure, way. Sure, sure, sure. Physically. I'll, I'll let you make a choice on this one, Neil, and yeah. then we'll come over to Karlak. You can either give me a deception check, yeah. which is like when you're trying to lie in deceit and things like that. Yeah. A performance check because you're playing the role of a fop and you kind of want to play oh, into I it. See that number? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, let's know. Like this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> or um, I would say <clears throat> maybe acrobatics, like you kind of try and bump into them without them realizing. Kind I'm of gonna thing. I'm going to try. I think I've got plus five in acrobatics. I'm going to try acrobatics. Sure. So this by... would be more like kind of almost like pretending to like drop your hanky and be like, yeah, oh, the last minute, I, yeah. And then boom, 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 boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Or, Pluck a flower, yeah, and then and, whack. but trip them up at the exactly, same time. Yeah, yeah. I'd say, yeah, give me an acrobatics roll. Okay, thank you. Um, and I'll say that this is like these are <coughs> veteran guards. This isn't going to be super easy, but they're not the elite of the elite, so it's not going to be too tricky either. Can I add something? I mean, you tell me. Add a flavor. <laughs> I have a cantrip called Minor Illusion. Yes, which as uh, you are a high elf. As a high elf. Thank you. I am. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I just need a piece of fleece or like lint or something like that. Well, um, the way I always do it is that basically, like, things like material components, they're good suggestions if you want to I, use I like them. the idea that I have pocket lint. Yeah, like little pocket lint. You could use that. Yeah, fluff sure. That, little fluff. Yeah. I create a sound or an image of an object within range that lasts for duration. Mm -hmm. The illusion then ends if you dismiss it as an action or cast a spell again. Mm -hmm. Creatures use an action to examine the sound, they'll determine it is an illusion. Yeah. And a successful intelligence check against your DC will blah blah blah. Yeah. If the creature discerns the illusion for what it is, the illusion becomes faint. So I'm not, I don't want anything they want to touch or investigate. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do an added thing. Mm -hmm. So before I get in their way, I'm going to create an illusion of a bird, like a pigeon. Mm -hmm. Just going <laughs> and flapping straight through them, like almost okay. like about to hit them. Yeah. And then like ducking, or a seagull. Seagull. seagull going <laughs> I'd and say, then yeah, I get in their way. Yeah. If that can give me some kind of bonus. And they will do that. Seagulls will come for you like that. Like that. So I, I live in Bristol. I know what they're like. Um, yeah. No, absolutely. I'd say like the minor illusion, you don't need to roll. You just create the illusion. It flies towards them. Um, give me this give a name. acrobatics. Jim. Jim the seagull. <laughs> 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 flies in. Give me the acrobatics with advantage, because these guys are going to try and duck out of the way, and, and that's going to give you an way. easier chance cool. to try and knock. All for right, sure. so that is a 15 plus 5. This 20. is an excellent uh, example of how to bullshit your DM, everybody. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Neil's giving us a master class. Natural 20 on bullshit. Oh, uh, wonderful. So, uh, it's a 15 plus 15. 5. It's 20, mm -hmm. and the second one, just for shits and giggles, is 11. So dirty nice, 20. yeah, so dirty 20. Um, perfect, yeah. You easily kind of bump into their way. You kind of trip one of them up. One of them, the woman kind of whips around almost to be like, what the f Yes. What the fine weather we're having today, my lord. Is it? Yes, yes. Um, you do realise that these are, um, the bullshit name I came up with, the, the label sure, I Sure, sure, sure. These are the such and such from Neverwinter, and they're almost irreplaceable. I what are you doing? Oh, running around like this? Chasing a thief. Uh, I don't see a thief, do you? And look around. Uh, they're gonna look I'm around. gonna finger my cro cross my fingers and look at Carla. Great, <laughs> great cinematic moment as the camera pans round yeah. for us to then jump to Carla. So Carla, you see this kind of like, she like she makes some weird gestures towards uh, Asterion and then starts limping towards <laughs> you. And as she gets closer, she's like, uh, your fancy friend better be fucking right and like and just is like looking at you like well What's the plan kind of thing? Um, so I'm gonna hide her in a crate. Yeah, so <laughs> you, as much do you just like turn around and like the back? I don't want to <laughs> Yeah, you're just gonna tear this Let's thing do off. It. We've got second great. Give me an <laughs> athletics check on this <laughs> 17 nice plus uh, 11 uh, 4 plus 21, 21. I think we did it. One handed, rah, you just, the nails go flying, Sorry, um, but you rip this thing off. She like checks and it's big enough for her to fit in. And it doesn't look like, it looks like maybe it's like transporting some like soft, something soft like silks and things. So she just does he no hesitation, jumps in it. Yeah, and then can you I put slap. the lid on and sit on it? Yep, you absolutely <laughs> can. Just strike a casual pose, just voguing. Um, and then we see. It's not comfortable, so you do another one. Yeah. Another one and finally you settle for this. And then we see exactly that as the guards look over they're like what what and they're like scanning around like no she was right that she was right here uh, and then the other one's just like come on she must have disappeared into the crowd i'm so sorry Mona. we are in a pursuit uh do we have give me your name and number hang on a second oh. i'm done with you yet all right very good sir name and number they pull out like these little tin badges they have as they like do little... that i'm gonna still go and then come back in sure yes? Yeah, and they give you these little tin badges with numbers, and they tell you their names. I'm gonna take out some, and I'm, I'm pretend I have a pencil. <laughs> and just sort of yes, I'm taking yeah, this yeah, down. Yes. yes. Well then, now look sharp here. I'm gonna keep them waiting until I finish with look sharp. Yes. Yes, my lord. And don't do it again. Very good, sir. Otherwise, it'll be your ass. It, absolutely, sir. Especially you. We wouldn't want to upset, upset you. No, absolutely not, sir. Get out of here, fuck off. Alright, thank you, sir. <laughs> I scamper off. <laughs> I'm um, going to start whistling as I walk back to Carla. Nice. Nice. Um, we're going to jump back to you guys. I'm going to jump around the table yep. so we can kind of see a bunch of people. Uh, Will and Gail. Mm. You guys finish You finish reading your book, Volo's Guide to uh, Afkatla. Mm -hmm. um, Gail emerges from the shady alley that he disappeared into. Um, been doing some Never mind. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Bad ass. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, do you guys want to head somewhere? So with Gail's Detect Magic, you don't get any sense of this like foul magic yet, but you know you've got yeah. about 10 minutes of concentration, mm -hmm. but it, it's only 30 feet range, so it's not a huge radius. Yeah. Um, so whereabouts, what do you guys think you want to do next? Will, where have you read that might be useful to go to that this lot aren't there already. Something like that. Sentence. I want to head, or put those words together in the correct order. <laughs> it's been a long day. You should day. be fine. I'm still doing this 10 minute thing. It's, it's quite tiring. Looking at our map, I believe we should head 
to the cold wizards. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. Let's do that. But we need to find out how to get there, so... Yeah, well, in the book it would tell you that the cow wizards are stationed in the government district of Athkatla. It means you have to cross the bridge, but it's on the other side. It's in, like, the rich of the upper city, they call it. It's, okay. like, the rich part of the city. Um, and, yeah, you can just cut past the bridge um, and head, head that way. If you I'm going to head that way, yeah. The cow, the, the cow wizards. Um, perfect. You guys uh, begin making your way there. You pass through the river district and, it, and head onto the bridge. Uh, as you reach the bridge's gates, uh, you can see that there are these rows of uh, soldiers wearing right and red, uh, red and white heraldry, um, and they've got halberds and they're kind of lined up. And there is a like they kind of stop you and just say like, "Toll for the bridge, two silver, two silver per person." Kind of like you know you pay a little toll you see the other traders and that are doing it you're let out onto the bridge i'm not gonna make you mark off two silver you've got plenty of money you guys make your way down and you can see that on the bridge think of like the ponte vecchio it's this kind of beautiful like long bridge but it's huge there's even this enormous temple um and you see this has this golden sphere for the top of it like a dome and there is the statue around sort of like late like lounging on the dome kind of propped up against it is this beautiful female figure with this flow Glowing hair, and although it's been made of gold, the gold has been mixed with something to make her hair bright red, like this kind of fiery red that's catching the sunlight as it hits. And the temple is made of white stone, and it spills down. And you can see this uh, emblem of a woman's f very fine feminine face with this red hair spilling around it. It's like on the front of the temple, and there seems to be some sort of gathering outside. Um, you can see dozens of kind of merchants and upper class uh, looking citizens, lower class looking citizens as you see what appears to be sort of like an impromptu fashion show is being taken place and you can see people going into the temple there's like little stations like stone almost like a kind of like a uh, you get the fountain for the holy water in a church but these are like little makeup stations and they have like attendants like doing people's makeup and hair for free off the street people come in they get a haircut they get their face washed they get their makeup done um they get like you know but look, there's baths it looks like further in and things like that and yeah it seems to be some sort of temple of beauty uh as you go to pass it uh can you tell me both your passive perception scores so at the very bottom of your sheet i believe it should say just oh, above yeah. uh 10 10 for gail okay. 10 for me as well 10 for you guys as well perfect this is gonna be good well i'm gonna <laughs> in fact i'll roll this in front of you guys Good. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you guys pass the Bridge Street. You see that this festival um, is called something. It's called uh, the uh, Day of the Adoring Eye. You begin to overhear people talking about it, like, "Oh, Happy Day of the Adoring Eye to you!" Uh, blah blah blah. You see an attendant like come up to you, a very beautiful elven woman, long blonde hair, perfectly straight, in this kind of like chiffon style robe, and she says, "Suni's blessing upon you, gentlemen. May I interest you in haircut?" or uh, some cosmetics or anything from the temple. Today's service is free uh, as a celebration of the adoring eye. Uh, or is there anything else that Lady Firehair can help you with today? Uh, we are looking to speak to the called wizards. And she see her face sort of blanches. Oh my, um, well, the, the cowled wizards are up in the government district, but um, I'm afraid that they've, there's been rumors throughout the city that they are not accepting visitors and they're not seeing uh, people with questions. There is apparently some important business that they've been dealing with, I'm afraid. Um, is it important or? It's very important. And I do have some money on hand if you could potentially give me any more information about oh, what they're right. discussing. Straight to the ground. Um, or, or. <laughs> <laughs> love, love, love the energy. <laughs> <laughs> or we could either maybe use some magic. <laughs> oh, even better. Just because I just thought this is going to be fine. Yeah, go on. So either we could do either charm said person. Look how many cards he's got in front of him. <laughs> so many cards. I know. Okay. I think Tim is just like, yeah. I've got all these cards and I want to use them to do this. Yeah. Um, still got magic going on around. Still, um, I guess I'm not sensing anything still. So the yeah, I'd say we don't detect with magic. You're not picking up on that foul kind of like the same essence yeah. you saw around Tav. What am I but kind of this, like getting anything? Yeah, you are getting... We should hope so. This, you know, this elven woman in front of you and the temple behind, the temple radiates enchantment 
magic. You can tell that at a glance. There are, there are many different types of magic going on in this temple. But the woman in front of you, there is a mixture of illusion magic, enchantment magic, um, all about her person. Um, you aren't quite sure of the effect of it, but this woman is radiating like these elements of magic to her. Um, and like you, you definitely notice, obviously it's me speaking, but this her voice is so melodic and soothing and her appearance is flawless. Like she looks like, you know, picture perfect out of a book. And um, you can see that most of the priests and priestesses, the men and the women all have very similar, like just, they look just wonderful, but also different shapes and sizes. Like, you know, this is uh, a very, lots of different types of beauty and how beauty can be personified at this place. You know, different body shapes, different sizes, um, different genders, different styles, different fashions, but everyone just looks happy and they have that radiant glow about them, do you know? Um, so they radiate that. Sounds suspicious. And she's Sounds like, suspicious. Yeah, I mean, could be. Very could be. suspicious, this. Mm -hmm. Not overly trusting of this whole sure. situation Indeed. we find ourselves in. <laughs> <laughs> so this, is Gail actively saying to Will, like, whoa, hold on a minute, uh, as he's yeah. trying to bribe the lady? I think so. Okay. I think we just need to just oh, pay well, heed. Take just to, just take a step. <laughs> okay. Just have a moment. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think anything is necessarily what we think it might be. I see. Oh, well, I must say as well that it is very generous, but you do not need to give us money. It, 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 it's fine. We are happy to exchange information uh, f freely. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that I, I know very little about the situation with the Cal Wizards. It started uh, perhaps a week ago. Um, they began to close their doors. It, it was around the same time that there were reports of these kidnappings. Um, in fact, one of our own priests Priests has, uh, priestesses has gone missing. Uh, she was taken from the temple a few days ago. Uh, we've been petitioning the wizards and the guard to search for her, but um, to, no, to no luck, I'm afraid. Uh, you mentioned something about things not being right. Did I hear that correct, sir? <sighs> yes, do you know what? It's this It's this old hair, and I hear <laughs> <laughs> you're doing haircuts on a bit of, you know, uh, you can't spruce. possibly want to cut it. It is glorious. It's the split ends. <laughs> oh, I just want a little, just a little <laughs> bit off that, maybe a beard trim. You do your magic. Gail. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you advantage on this next roll because that's a good line. Um, can you, but I would like you to make a deception check for me, please. So Fantastic. this is, you yes, are you are I'd actively betraying your intentions and beliefs. So this is the deception skill check on your skills. Yep. What bonus do you have? A plus one. A plus one. So you're going to give advantage. You roll twice, take the highest. So that's 13, so that's 14. Uh, yeah. It's 14. 14. Uh, <laughs> I'm roll her insight and see if she picks up on that. Nope. Uh, in fact, she is totally taken in by Gail. You see that this elven woman, looking at the hair, the kind of regal stance of the wizard, she's like, I would be personally happy to attend to any of your sort of needs or desires for today. Um, we could start with a rinse and get out of those dead ends. Oh, with would perhaps, be... perhaps a facial scrub. That would be lovely. <laughs> Will's like, you know what else? <laughs> Completely distracted my, my by the mission. My yeah. companion here, hair bear yes. with, bear with. My companion here will <laughs> really love the same. Oh yes, of course, of course. Thank you so much. Of course. Uh, so come in, yeah, absolutely. The, the temple of Lady Suni is more than welcome to have any travellers in it. And perhaps you could ask some of the others around. I, I will provide you what information I can, but um, yes, come with me and she'll sort of lead you in and she'll probably like gesture to many of the attendants, whoever you sort of you know want. Uh, they'll come in and it's literally like a haircut, the, you know, a shave if you want one, facial scrub, a little thing. And it's, it's this, it, and you, you see this is the goddess Suni She's the goddess of love and beauty. And this is just a service they provide the city. Like anybody can come in and get a haircut and get cleaned up. And that's part of her her ethos is that everyone deserves the chance to feel beautiful, basically. Um, and so this is a really lovely we, thing. We did very well in coming this way. We did. Yeah. <laughs> Wonder how the others are getting yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure fine. Neil, you've got the sense of it because we're going to then jump ahead to these guys as we leave Gail and Will having oh, like, I, oh, yeah, basically oh, like spa treatment. Like Battling popcorn monsters. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Lazel and Shadowheart, you guys are traveling to the Adventures Mart, and you have been sold uh, two tickets to the Ballspawn narrative experience, um, a living history event uh, of recreation and fun. Um, recreation bong. and education, sorry. And is Bing Bong still attached? He, so, I think that he's not whole, like hugging onto you anymore, Aww. but like he's holding your hand like a little child. Yeah. Like he, and, and just as a point, I don't know if you've ever seen an imp, they 
looked like a little red devil baby. Like he's like got like little tiny horns. He's kind of got like a big head, a little body, these little black wings, like little bat wings, little pudgy arms and legs, and he's just holding on. He does have like a little outfit. Like it's kind of got like a little bow tie, like a greeter, like you might does get like a in a supermarket. Tag, like, Hi, he bomb. doesn't have a name tag, but he does. He just has like a little bell on the hat. Like, <laughs> yeah. I've embellished Bing Bong since we took a small break. Um, <laughs> he's like holding your hand like this, and he's just sort of like, <laughs> and he's just quiet. And he's happily just going wherever you go. Great. Um, so yeah, and it's a little family outing. Uh, <laughs> Shadow Heart, do you release the imp? <laughs> Why? I He's like not going him. to come on this adventure with a Shadow Heart. We can barely manage the others, let alone an imp baby. He might be helpful. I'm keeping him, Nozel. Exactly, Bing Bong. Peak D and D. You guys make your way in, and uh, the gnome behind the thing kind of points you in the direction. There's a little small alleyway, and it's like posters of these kind of like you know these images of this figure. Can't tell whether it's male or female, fighting against this horrible-looking demon kind of creature. Some various companions around their side, all the Ballspawn experience. By Adventures Mar. Um, <laughs> you make your way down and it leads you into basically a room with a portal, like a kind of archway door with a magic portal in it. As you arrive, you hear a voice, um, and as you step up close to the portal, you hear a voice that says, you must gather your party before adventuring forth. <laughs> and then as you kind of all in position, the door is shut and the portal ignites and, and, and opens and you can step inside. So you guys step inside the portal? Oh, I suppose we should. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Might be useful. You step in, um, and you uh, appear in a chamber. Um, it is full of kind of like metal catwalks above a dark chasm. And you can see that there are these hanging cages that would have been suspended in this room above the chasm itself. Um, you can also see as you arrive, you kind of move out of this archway um, into this kind of space. Next to you, there are two of these cages with humanoid looking shapes in them. Um, but you very quickly, especially Shadow Heart with your perception, because I believe your passive is 15 mm -hmm. passive perception, you quickly realize they are not real people. They are animatronics. They're like clockwork people dressed and painted like skin colored wood. Um, and you see a um, an elven druidic woman in green with like white hair and a staff. Um, and she kind of looks very bored and robotically is kind of twisting around. And then you see a big muscular man, bald of head with like a purple streak over one eye um, and he's got a little tiny stuffed hamster, like a little you know, fake looking hamster in his hand and he's kind of like mm. and they appear to like you know, be making noises but you, you, you can't hear them from where you are um, the catwalk chamber moves down, there looks like there's two side chambers, like one that splits off to the side and one that carries on straight ahead of you so we can choose between going down you to can go off to the side or you can carry straight on, it looks like there's a corridor like a stone corridor that leads straight down there is like a little side room like it looks like there was once like a door it's been opened up and now contains like some sort of side chamber and then there are these two like clockwork automatons to the side of you that are thing and, and Bing Bong is absolutely like wants to go and see the little automatons he's just like ah! he's like walking towards them <laughs> I'll go with Bing Bong you coming? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> sure. Uh, you you approach them and you begin to hear uh, the sort of woman is like nature servant awaits and just is turning around and you see a plaque uh, the Hydra Jahira uh, former companion of the Ballspawn kind of thing um, and it kind of turns to you and says. I am Jahira, I am one of the high- and basically goes into a speech about who they are. The next one along is, uh, swords, not words, go for the eyes, but, and just repeats these phrases over and over again, and you see a little right. plaque that says Minsk and Boo, former companions of the thing, and tells a little bit about their story, how they were captured by this mage called John Irenicus, they were kept here, uh, the Ballspawn was a prisoner, blah blah blah, kind of story, and then Bing Bong's like, ah, he kind of like points at them and then sort of like, nah, nah, chats away, but then gets bored. He's like, yeah, looking around like, what next? <laughs> that's it. <laughs> he just wanted to check out the cool, the uh, cool people. That, that's it. That was all. That, that was all. Okay. That's what he wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't think that this imp is by any means going to help you in any way. <laughs> I, 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 I don't mind. No, I don't, good, I'm, good. Not, I'm not. I'm just going where he's going. Going, going where he's going. I 
we should take the the, the, the other the, big, the main corridor. Yeah, let's yeah. go down yeah. down the main sure, corridor. Sure, sure. Yeah, you begin making your way down to the corridor, and it turns into like an L shape that turns off to the side. Um, it leads you through a chamber with an arcane, like magic-looking machine, almost like a like a piece of like a generator, like a power generator, but with crystals and runes and sigils instead of mechanical parts. Um, there is a uh, it, there are, is illusions of lightning blasts, like a piece of like a bolt of lightning bounces around the room it passes through you harmlessly like an illusion bing bong scared he's like ah! and he like jumps up onto your back when he sees it coming um and then you make your way through into the next chamber which is almost like a cave and you see that there was once this large space where like one of these clockwork figures would have been but it's been torn to shreds and you now see that there is this kind of tattered remnants of a genie-like figure and it's been ripped apart and there is a huge blood stain that drags off further down into this tourist attraction. Follow the blood stain, right? Always. Okay. <laughs> I agree. Uh, the corridor leads out of this room and uh, eventually you come to a crossroads. The blood stain drags down and goes off to the left. There is a chamber to the right and then a door uh, leading further to the north. Um, but as you get there, you see that the blood is clearly something was dragged this way. Um, it's almost leaving that streaked trail as you go down. Um, if you reach that crossroads and look into the chamber to your right, you can see the remnants of like a clay creature, like this big hulking. It would have been, you know, maybe like 10 feet tall. It would have filled the corridor and the chamber and it too has been like ripped apart and like left scattered around the place. Uh, but the blood stain goes off to the left instead. So it looks like something. Blood. Follow the blood. Do you, do you follow the blood? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Can we leave Bing Bong finally, or must we take him with us? You see him, he's like licking the blood off the floor. He's like, ah. got some. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Reminds me of someone. All right. <laughs> now I start to have a bit more of an appreciation for this <laughs> Bing Bong. <laughs> I knew you'd come around. Now. If you guys are going to follow uh, this trail of blood, I'm going to have to pass it over to my narrator. Oh. To her instincts were correct. <laughs> and you all died. <laughs> <laughs> Roll initiative. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> right. The trail of fresh blood is streaked across the floor and leads into this chamber. Dozens of glass vats and elongated tubes are set into strange casings and mechanisms around the room, metal railings enclosed around them at arm's length. Each vessel is filled with a bright blue and green liquid and contains malformed creatures and twisted puppets of old experiments suspended in the fluid. A plaque reads, Adventurers marked Balsborn Experience, the cloning vats, below the largest of these disgusting displays. At the far end of the room, the trail of blood leads to a section of wall that has swung aside, revealing another passageway. Dun dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> the dun 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 is from there, like, yes. think of that, you know? <laughs> Shadowheart, it seems there's something wrong here, something very wrong. Perhaps we should go down this secret passageway. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, Lazel, you read my tadpole mind. <laughs> Uh, as you guys begin to descend further down into this thing, I'm going to jump back and sort of like bounce around and things like that for you guys. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I've got to somehow get you all back together. Karlak <laughs> <laughs> and Asterian. So you guys successfully kind of helped this kind of girl escape. Um, and you basically, after a few minutes, you hear like a. Did you hear that? <laughs> oh! oh yeah, we, we just got chatting. Oh, right. <laughs> In real time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you kind of. Do you think the guards have gone? So I can... Yeah. There are guards like around, but none of them are like they're like patrolling guards, they're not like, those two guards. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's like there's you could probably get her out <clears throat> safely in the crowd now that those two who are chasing her have gone. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, like there are there there are always guards present. Like, there's never Nobody a part seems of the city. To, like, no, 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 apart from those two, let me ask you. Okay. Yeah, shit. Okay. Right, yeah. So I'm gonna open the yeah. crate. You just hear like she's kind of like lying on her back, like kind of like got her hands like behind her head, and she's gonna got and she's just like, uh, she looks up at you like, well. 
took your sweet time, but I'm very grateful for the uh, for the save there. And sort of, you know, didn't expect to. And she kind of uh, thieves cans back at you, Asterian, just sort of like a fellow uh, fellow shadow walker would probably be what she says. Like, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna clock that, but then I'm gonna do the sign of uh, to, you owe me. Okay. And I want an introduction. Okay. Um, she kind of like glances around. She looks at you, and then she looks at like you have no idea what we're doing, do you, sweetheart? Connected to him psychically. Oh, yep. That's handy. That's a real <laughs> nice trick. Um, okay. And she kind of like looks around and she says like, "Well, I figure I owe you at least an introduction. Like, what do you what do you want? You want to meet the shadow thieves?" Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you go and then go look at Carl? Like, really? This is what we've, we have to work with. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm not technically a shadow thief. Close the lid. But no, 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 wait, 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 wait. She's like, no, 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 wait, but I know, I know, I know one of them. I know, I know one of the council members. I know one of the heads in charge. She's real nice. She's, re- she's the best. Name? Uh, well, her name's Imowen. Imowen. Have I heard of her because of Baldur's Gate? You definitely have heard of her. Okay, right. Oh. Oh. She, 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 wait, she's, she's a friend of mine. Oh. I'm training to be a shadow thief just like her. Close the lid. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> one we have yeah, a second yeah, yeah so um, sort of like so Imowen I think might be something quite useful however you might be the best person to talk to her kind of mm-hmm. this is sort of the whole me thing you know I don't know they had a bit of history <laughs> with uh, my kind so might be best if you put on your the best. The big red tiefling on of, fire. Well, that's in. a good point. Okay, fuck it, we'll just do it together. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, don't put me back in the box. I promise I can I can get you a meeting with Emmerwin, I promise, I promise. Now. Okay, okay, follow me. And she'll like climb out and she'll be like, whew, you really don't mess around, do you? Um, and she's like, I'm Lorana, by the way. Is, she, is her neck a bit sore? Huh? Is she was doing this? Yeah, like she kind of I like. She's got a limp as well. Yeah. Oh no! Yeah. Mm. I'm I'm starting to feel a bit peckish. Okay. Okay. Just FYI. Oh, okay. We go via a tavern or something. Um, <laughs> yeah, she kind of and she can because she's got this thick dwarven kind of like dyed ginger hands and she brushes it aside when she rubs yeah, it and that's when you glance that, yeah. like the okay. very pristine looking kind of neck. Mm. Um, Is she limping. She, yeah, she's got a sprained ankle, so she would we still be to limping and stuff like that. Move along. Oh, you can't touch. I'm gonna, actually, as, you, as we do that, I'm going to look around. Is there anything like I could fashion into some rag m- of a mitt thing? Something that, <laughs> that, like, that doesn't <laughs> set fire, gonna be when set I fire but Fire could, retardant. Like an eel she can put on her hands, like mitts or something. Roll, like. roll a d20 <laughs> for me. Well, eels aren't necessarily I mean, flammable. They're oily and stuff. They're not that kind of oily. You could put your hand in a giant eel yeah. if you want, Carlac. Like, like, that's your yeah, choice. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> otherwise... <laughs> we, could get a, we could make a little splint or something for her. Just get a stick. I mean, she, she yeah, could get under okay. Or she yeah. could lean on you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find a stick. I'll find yeah. a stick. Yeah, I mean, she's like, and she's pretty capable. Like, she's young. Like, she'll limp, but like, yeah, yeah with it's going to take yeah, twice yeah. as long. Yeah, it'll take twice as good, long. Good point. Okay. Yeah, you guys can find that. No problem. That's right, not a big fine. deal. Yeah. Um, you guys find that for her. God, it just rips up. She's like, <laughs> yeah. you probably Over get that knee. crate oh. that you already broke and just <laughs> snap a piece of it off. There you go. Oh, I guess that'll do. Yeah. Um, and she kind of little. Uh, she <laughs> takes you to a nearby inn called the Five Flagons. Yep. Um, and she kind of leads you around. It's actually in the bridge district. So she leads you onto the bridge. She talks her way past the toll guards mm-hmm. um, and leads you onto the bridge district. Okay. Um, and she takes you in there and she goes up. And you can see that, like, the, the bodyguard, who's this big, like, barrel chested orc like not a half orc like a full orc yep. and he's got these thick like kind of like dreadlocked hair tied back you can see that he's just rippling with muscles we're talking like proper like weightlifter like bodybuilder kind of build yep. um, and he's like on the front and he just like he like looks down at her and he's like oh causing trouble again little Rana and she's just like no I ain't doing that Hank and uh, she's like I'm here to I'm here to meet I, I'm, sh- I'm, my, I'm seeing my friend um, and he just goes like <laughs> Still can't believe a little squad like you is friends with him. Uh, and he goes like, he goes like, like nods in. And he like looks at you two, and he just like, and I think like he clocks you both, and he kind of is giving you that kind of like, hey, don't cause trouble in here, kind of thing. Like especially like probably to Karlak, like sizing up the size. But he still like looks at you, Asarian, and I think like kind of like peers at you a little bit. Mm-hmm. And he kind of sizes you up, and you kind of think this guy actually maybe isn't the type to be taken in by the whole foppish thing. Like he like he sees like he like looks at your arm, and you can see he's looking at your hands. Okay, um, in in perfect, perfect orcish. Yeah, I'm going to say, <laughs> oh my man, so you're the perceptive type, yes? <laughs> oh, 
then you know that my friend and I are not to be trifled with. Da? Ah. Mm. He just looks and back in Orcus he says, You are correct, but neither am I. Let's not cause trouble for each other, perhaps. Agreed. Okay. And he like nods. He's like terribly nice, actually. Yeah, like it <laughs> wouldn't melt. Yeah. No. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, it's like she he kind of like looks, he smiles back, his big kind of like big orc tooth and stuff like that. He kinda of smiles back and he's just like, Yeah, he kinda of nods, he's like, cool. And he like lets you in. Uh, and he probably looks at you, Karlak. Use your charm, son. Use your charms. <laughs> he probably would look at you, Karlak, and like get get the right uh, get the red fire beer, it's the best one. Appreciated, mate. No problem. Uh, and he like lets you in. Uh, you guys, uh, Lorana, <laughs> Lorana, the little dwarf girl, leads you in. Uh, she's she's like, okay, you two wait by the bar. I have to go let her. I ha she has to check in. You know, I need. I can't just bring you up to see her right now. But you wait by the bar, and I'll go and let her know that you're here. Can I make an insight check to see whether she's actually doing that or she's yeah. fucking off? Because if she yeah. is, yeah. I want to keep an eye. Absolutely, on absolutely. Can we, make an insight check. Insight? No, no, you're doing it. Okay. Because I'm right. thinking about the pint. You are thinking. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it just oh. big frothy. Oh. Mugs, like people like handing them out. Dreaming. They've even got like a little magic thing Focus. which cools it. Like oh. a ray of frost the beard. <laughs> <laughs> so Focus, darling. Focus. Uh, I rolled a 19 plus 120. 19. Wow. I will tell you this, Asterian. You do think she's gonna do what she says, mm -hmm. but there's definitely kind of like and you're a you're a rogue and you know you've got training in the kind of shadowy arts. Mm -hmm. This is very much a she's gonna let this person know you're here, they're gonna scope you out, and then they're gonna decide if they're gonna meet sure. with you. It's very much a kind of like a, this is like a heads up in case you're trouble. This is insight, so I guess it doesn't work in perception. I just always want to scan around the bar to see who is working amongst the- Oh, I'm not even gonna make you roll for it. Oh, like, fine. I'd say about a third of the clientele here are probably like- Definitely guild members. Shadow thieves. Okay, yeah. that's like, fine. I'm just gonna clock exactly where they are around yeah, the bar. Yeah, for sure. Maybe stand a tiny bit closer to Carla. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, sure. And like, they're definitely, you, you would pick up, they've noticed you guys, they're kind of keeping yeah, yeah, eye. but they're, sure, sure. They're, there's yeah, no fine. trouble. They're yeah, just camping yeah. in. Yeah. Um, after a few minutes, you, you enjoy a great beer, and the guy is just <laughs> the, the, the bartender. The bartender like hands it over, it um, is so um, and uh, you know you wait for a little bit. Like they kind of take a long time to serve you, but when he does serve you, it's just like uh, on the house. Apparently, uh, we're welcoming travelers today. Yeah, and it's a big beer. It's like a big frosty pint, basically, nice. um, in a big tankard. Um, and uh, for you, he just turns around and says, "What can I, I figured this one. Uh, Hank, Hank uh, suggested the the red fire. So, what would I? What can I get you? Oh, something full-bodied and red. <laughs> All right. Mm. He, because he has a bit of a thing. Yeah, he looks at you. He says, "Like, would Sir care for a special, um, a special drink, a nighttime drink?" I think Sir might. Mm. Does uh, have a preference for source where we might have sourced the the vintage from? Oh, something I don't know. Why don't you surprise me? What's what's the uh, daily special? Well, we have something. Uh, it is uh, ethically procured, shall we say, uh, from donators uh, who provide a, a very succulent human. Organic, vintage. is it, darling? Mm. Organic. All right. Takes the fun out of it, but sure, why not? I'll try anything <laughs> else. Uh, and he comes back with a suspiciously red looking glass of wine. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it says wine. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, it's, <laughs> and there's something about that where you're like, why would they have this here? Yeah, I'm like already, already aware of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but eventually, you guys are, yeah, like you, uh, the Lorana comes down and says, like, okay, mm. boss, boss wants to say it. Okay. I don't know if there is a way of doing this. We can't. There's no way of testing to see whether or not this it's pure wine, or if it's yeah. wine that's been altered. I don't know. There's a way that we can do that. Is there? Uh, as in like right. drugs and things like that. You yeah. can make a medicine check, like oh, smelling okay. it and be okay. like, see if you can get so hit of poison. Like, actually, I'm, the way I'm going to do it is just go. Just like a little bit like that. <laughs> just to like, just take a tip, like a little tip. Like, a little... I can't watch that. <laughs> like that. I heard it before I saw it. I think we all heard it, like, for sure. Um, I'm just, I'm just lapping yeah. a bit. Yeah, just Can you lap a little bit of it? Just to make sure. Uh, it's a 14 plus my, what is it? You said medicine. Uh, I'd say medicine, That's yeah. 15. 15? Yeah. No, you think this is fine. There's no drugs or anything literally like that. just down, down it. No, no, yeah. do it like you did it before. Yeah. So oh. I start lapping about That's going to be clipped and put on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> we have enough problems with all this. I know, I know. Yeah. So oh, I mean, you've got gonna, no hope. No, um, I'm going to keep it the pretense sure. and daintily sit okay. and cool. Well, well you guys are taken upstairs uh, and uh, Lorana leads you up into a room. Um, it's a very well appointed, but not 
overly so. It's like a comfortable room. There's a big <coughs> desk with like books. You can see a well-stocked library, a fine four-poster bed. Are there the, any other exits apart from the door we just came in? Uh, none that you can see. Oh shit. Um, but there is. Uh, there are windows, but they're boarded. Yes. Uh, you can I've see that they're, they're closed and they're nailed. They're like nailed shut. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've got a car back, like, it's fine. Um, <laughs> and inside you see a young half-elven woman, maybe in like her 20s, early like early 20s, mid 20s, um, purple cloak, kind of like the little dwarf girls, but this one is a proper made cloak, like really nicely made. Ginger hair kind of cut a little short. And uh, yeah, she's just like working at the books and she turns around and says, hey, well, you wanted to see me. You wanted an introduction to the Shadow Thieves, I hear. Good afternoon. You're invited. You're invited, oh good. I'm gonna step forward. Sure. And say, thank you, it's very civil. Um, should we cut to the chase, darling? I appreciate I appreciate business when it's straight straight to the point. I've got a lot to do, but uh, you two definitely spark some interest. Okay, so so out of character, what do hmm. we want to talk about in terms? You're of... the one that knows the thieves. No, I know. Okay. What do you What do you think the best sort of course for this? Is? They know what's going on. Yeah, in it's this really town. fun out because the kidnapping thing we heard earlier. They're going to know something. Then yeah. you've got the corruption. Then we've we got, start like, the with that. Up, yeah, yeah, sorts, yeah. So. Okay. All right, we'll what start with that. Okay. okay. So. We need some information, uh, as one guild, paid up guild member <laughs> to another. Um, the, we've been hearing about a lot of disappearances, but we also have a bit of a sticky problem. You see, one of our um, friend, work colleagues uh, has a particular <laughs> problem uh, with a certain very powerful and very ancient magic. We were assisted here, let's say, by another equally powerful magician. However, we are trying to uncover the source, which appears to be tethered in this city. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense based on what's happening. Okay. Well, I, I appreciate directness. Uh, thanks for uh, giving me the details. I'll tell you this. If you're looking for some sort of magical source of power, and I mean, something's definitely going on in this city. We've got people going <coughs> missing. Uh, a lot of the cowled wizards are currently out of action. We don't quite know what happened, but... About that. Mm. Is there somebody we could and do this sort of count for cash, speak to about what exactly is afflicting them. I mean, for sure, I'm, if you can find that out, I'd love to know. I'd, I'd happily pay for the information myself. All we know is that a few days ago, maybe a week or so, a number of them just collapsed, haven't woken up since. Uh, but you're interested in this, helping this friend of yours, and we've got some business. Uh, recently, I had another old friend, shall we say, uh, uh, they prefer to keep their name out of people's mouths, so let's call them Moonraiser. Uh, Moonraiser was doing a little job for me. They were trying to investigate the same thing you were, the kidnappings, the strange source of magic, the cow wizards. And I haven't heard from them in a few days, and that's not like them. Um, the last I knew, they said they had a lead down in Joaquin's Promenade. Apparently something to do with a shop, a trader there, something that stands out. They said that they were going to investigate and send word back, but that was a few days ago and I haven't heard from them. Um, and the name of this establishment? I, they didn't say, they just said it was, uh, he, they are a little strange, they're not used to living in cities, so they, uh, they just said it was a, an odd place, is what they said. Alright. Um, Apart from this, has any of your people been kidnapped? Yeah, one of them. Uh, a really good thief by the name of Morton. Uh, he went missing a few days ago. I don't like him. He's a cruel, mean son of a bitch, but he's a good thief and he's loyal. But he went missing. He's one of, and he's not the only one. We've had a bunch, but Morton and, was... And what are you doing about that? Trying to find them, but I got a bad history with some parts of the city, and so I've sent people out, but either they go missing or they don't find anything. So if can send you down there and you can find Moonraiser was my best shot I mean trust me I put the best person for the job but uh it's not like them to just go missing like that seems we are objectives are aligned seems that we've been hired so well, with this in mind uh, may hired I... is a strong word maybe uh, maybe you should be aligned strong words, so. <laughs> is the um uh, is the uh, the guild concierge available we find ourselves needing a <laughs> perhaps a little bit more of a robust uh Robust outfit for this evening's soiree, so to speak. Mm. 
I mean, it, depending on what you're looking for, I can put you in contact with some suppliers, yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, just absent mindedly going chink with the, um, with the clink, clink, clink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With yeah. the coins in my hand. Mm-hmm. Clink, clink, clink. Uh, if it's equipment you're looking for, uh, I can point you in the right direction. Uh, if it's uh, bespoke you know, tailoring, shall we say, uh, I know a few people in the city. Um, what do you think, darling? Something in uh, arms, perhaps? Yeah, perhaps, yeah. It's too luck. Indeed. <laughs> yes. Don't do the soft, don't do the soft don't do effect. It, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, we'll have We're all talking about the same thing, we right? We start using different metaphors. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose our business here is concluded, and we should head off to um, Joaquin's whatever it is. Joaquin's Promenade. Promenade. That's where, uh, that's where, that's where Moon Razor said they were heading, and that's the last time I heard from them. So, uh, There's other points of business. I mean, like I said, you're very interesting people, and... Uh, a group of six companions teleporting into the city gates and splitting off all around the city does get back to my ears. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> you say that all yeah. <laughs> I think, and she looks over, and in the doorway, um, you see a human man, maybe in his, like, 40s. He looks more like a, a carpenter. Um, he's even wearing kind of like a, an artisan's kind of gear. But he looks in, and he, go, he like, whistles, and he says... Yeah, they're moving in on the Temple of Sunni. I think they're looking for their friends. Uh, they've been chasing them ever since uh, one of them got caught doing magic. Um, oh, no. And you see him, him when, like, looks over to you. Him when looks over to you and is like, I think you better head to the Temple of Sunni just down the road. One of your friends is uh, about to get in a whole heap of trouble. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> Meanwhile... <laughs> You enjoy a most relaxing haircut. <laughs> uh, Will and yeah. Gail, uh, you, it's no wonderful facial scrub, little maybe a little manicure as well, um, and you have a delightful time. You find out that the elven woman who's been sort of attending to you, Gail, uh, her name is uh, is uh, Sister Althea. Um, she's been like attending to you. She's a priestess of Sunni. Uh, <laughs> Tell me about it. Tell me about it. I know. It's <laughs> There's so many stories like that in the city. Oh, yeah, from bad a. You bad. should. Oh. We really should. Perhaps. Uh, would you like wine? Do I? <laughs> yes, please. Oh, we, we should. Go. I know a fantastic place up in the temple. Blah blah blah. And there's like this kind of thing. Will like. I mean, like, who would like Will? Like, you know, there's all these different priests and priestesses um, that you could go to. Like, you've been probably enjoying the same things. Or would Will basically excuse himself and be like, No, I want to try and like get a move on. Like, have you joined Gail in? All yeah, this? I'm trying to make. Make haste with Gail. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, like, you're constantly yeah. around the time. Actually, you're, like, uh, sat in the waiting yeah. room. Like, uh, come come on, my robes be washed. <laughs> in that case, can as Gail is quite pants? distracted at this point, can Will make a perception check for me? Yeah, sure. So, this is d20 plus your perception skill. Okay. 12. 12. Plus you, plus zero. Uh, you notice, maybe, I think with a 12, you notice just a tad too late, but you do no- notice there is a kerfuffle at the entrance to the temple as you hear a couple of priests just like, please, this is a holy day. We do not want any trouble. Uh, blah, blah, and you hear some things like, this yeah. is this is Cowled Wizard's business. Out of our way, priest. Um, and you see the same uh, wizard in the green robes and the gold mask, the vermilion robes, sorry, and the gold mask, flanked by a couple of guards uh, kind of step in uh, and they are like fan out find that one I detected his magic in the in the city gates um, and you you see that he has like a crystal oh, ball plan. and right. he's like got a crystal ball <laughs> and, he's, like, looking, and almost like uh, he's like holding it up and like examining people like almost like they're checking like an ID basically oh, like yeah, looking yeah, for yeah. someone's face and you immediately know it's Gale. <laughs> like, yes, like, yes, you yes. catch a glimpse of just this fine cloth of brown hair, a flash of purple on like the little scrying ball. Yeah, the know, like, but oh, what's happened is I've had a shave, I've had a haircut, <laughs> and my You're robes are being washed, and I'm wearing something else. And, that, and right now, that's the only thing that is keeping you from being discovered. Exactly. <laughs> like, you're like mid shave, you've got the foam over here, so maybe it's like half it's done. A <laughs> and you're like in the Robe. Your robes are hanging to the side, and they are like scanning and looking around. But you've got maybe like maybe Gail's current situation has bought you a few seconds. What does Will do? I'm gonna say to Gail, Gail, mm. Gail. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's cucumber water. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get out of here now. 
Really? Yes. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you look over Gail as like Will's kind of gesturing, you're like, what's the big deal? And then you see this like force of the Count Wizard <laughs> making its way through examining, and your detect magic spell is going crazy. Like you can sense the immense magical power okay. of these people. But not right. the source of the spell. But not the source of the spell. No. <laughs> doesn't look like these cow whoever this Cal Wizard is doesn't look like they're involved. But it does look like they're on the hunt for you. It's happened before. <laughs> um well, what are we gonna do? I can't help but imagine that Gail's robe is like one of those really silk kimonos. Like, oh, yeah. It's just kind of wrapped up. It's like completely open at the front. It's way too short. <laughs> like hotel slippers. Yeah. Yeah. Like, can't move very quickly. Yeah. Something's happening. So yeah. yeah. Is, there no, is there no... Oh, this place is like, there's almost like, you guys probably had like moved back in, like Gail's having this spa treatment, and there's like steam from like a Roman's bath back here, so there's like a little bit of like mist, there are people milling around, um, and there's definitely like, there's columns, you could try and sneak out of here, or you can try and distract these guys and buy Gail some time, um, there doesn't look like there's really any exits apart from like the big main exit, maybe there are like tucked away in the eaves and the sides, but you've not seen them, this mist is obscuring your vision a little bit as well okay. um, so yeah what, do you, what would you like to do I'm going to go and speak to them the wizards I'm going to speak to the wizards okay they see you and they just okay. say like do you have business citizen we're searching for someone um, I'm going to ask them who are you searching for uh, a fugitive they've been using arcane magic in the city and they show you the orb we do not know their name but this is what they look like and he shows you spins this orb and it is a perfect almost like image of Gale like a headshot like a kind of like you know an, uh, is it like a like, hi Gale no it doesn't have that but yeah it does have that kind of like gormless kind of like <laughs> <laughs> like somebody's printed it in 3D and it shows you this they look like this have you seen them and I'm going to say I saw that man Running in that opposite direction. <laughs> okay, Classic. give me a deception skill check. Okay, a deception skill so this check. This is your list of skills. So what are we rolling with? Um, deception. Wait, yeah, plus three. It? Plus three, oh, not bad. Good. There's a wall up. Mm, 14, plus three, 17. 17, nice. 17. Nice. Right, well, I'm gonna pose this with his insight to see if he can pick up that maybe there's something else going on here. Okay. That's a natural one. Hey! hey. He turns <laughs> around, he looks at you and he's like, Cult wizards appreciate your support, and he like turns around. He's like, "Guards, that way!" Uh, <laughs> nice. And they just gesture and thing, and they begin scanning around, like kind of like you know, running off in that direction. And you've definitely—they're <laughs> probably going to realize pretty quick that he yeah. didn't go that way. But you've definitely bought yourself enough time to kind of get out of there, basically. Mm -hmm. um, well, so is that what you guys do? You want to kind of like you know, book it immediately, or is Gail like you know, is there anything else you want to do? I think I'm just going. What did I miss? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're back in your room what? now. Putting my beautiful boots back on. <laughs> oh, they're clean, amazing. Maybe we should ask someone in there. So we're like, oh, well, that was close. Does this happen often? What's uh, been happening? What yeah. Sort of, well, you what you really impressed happen? Sister Alfair. You kind of she kind of got the charms for you with your uh, role. So she'll look over to you and say, just like, unfortunately, yes, they are. They are. Are quite oppressive of any arcane magic use. We have to be very careful. Luckily, the the, the, the churches are protected, but if you need a, a quiet escape, I, I could help you. Oh, thank you. Yes, of course. That would be lovely. Um, I, w I can weave a, a temporary enchantment to disguise you um, and then simply make your way out and head out, or I could uh, cause a distraction. Hmm. What do we do? We would... I think we should take the disguise. Let's, do that. Let's take the disguise. Well, I can only perform it on one of you. Should I perform it on another? Well, like, do it on my yeah. good friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and she'll kind of like, oh, she kind of looks over you and she'll weave her hand and you actually see that Gale, it kind of retains your facial shape, but you become this uh, red-skinned tiefling with these like curved ram horns. Your outfit changes to be more like a mercenary soldier's kind of like chain mail with like a bandolier, like a big greatsword as she weaves this illusion over the top of you. And there's this moment where you see like it takes a second for her to kind of align them over each other so that they perfectly match up so there's this kind of shimmer and then she concentrates and then the two lock in place and you can see she's concentrating Gail this is a spell she has to maintain concentration on but she's like I will be able to keep this up uh, until just 
maybe the edges of the bridge district, but uh, not too much further. Um, and then she kind of like gestures to you. But yeah, it basically kind of looks like a tiefling gale, but with longer hair and this kind of almost military mercenary looking uh, outfit. Kind of matches a bit more like what like you wear, uh, Will, that kind of like, you know, the brigadine and stuff like that. You kind of look like a pair of cell swords kind of thing. Okay. Um, it's a good look. <laughs> very pleased <laughs> um, and yeah she gestures uh, like out to the temple and you can see that like uh, you know people are making their way out mm-hmm. right. well, that's gonna use this opportunity to escape and just get out yeah. alright yeah you guys make your way out you begin looking you can see the cow wizards and their guard the cow wizards actually the cow wizard himself flies up into the air you see him levitate his robes kind of flapping as he takes like a bird's eye view and he's like scanning around looking around trying to see perhaps where you were trying to gesture or where like gail might have gone um as you guys leave it's at this point probably karlak and Asterian, if you guys were like going to run after and try and like get involved um you guys enter in like exit the five flagons mm-hmm. and after a few moments you see will and a weird tiefling guy that he's with, like some sort of other soldier. <laughs> so, um, are they like, if they're like running, we can like run alongside them and go, Hi, well, oh, good you made it. Oh, thank God you got rid of Gale. Who's this? <laughs> 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 I have no idea. Where to next? Yeah, and you're like, <laughs> we, we've got a lead, let's yeah. go. Yeah. Um, so like running side by side. <laughs> unless there's anything you guys yeah. want to do. Like, cause... Colac says, hey soldier. Who's your friend? <laughs> oh, 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 God. Where did you find him? Sorry, listeners. Yes, who's your friend? <laughs> yeah, very kind of Geralt of Rivia style armor and then these big kind of curved horns, like dark horns. Yeah, probably, I mean, it sounds like, yeah, very much uh, both through the street. Um, Gail, any reaction or just uh, sort of despair? I'm just going to keep my eyes on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> just keep just keep moving. Hello, hello. Oh, shit. Oh, hang on, it sounds like Gail. It sounds like Gail. Amazing. Oh, shit. Oh, it's a good Okay, keep it. I recognize those boots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd probably be it. Yeah, you get clued in on the yeah. boots, right? That's how, it, that's how the game gets given away. She yeah, didn't disguise his boots. Tell us we probably need to get out um, of here, right? To make this, yeah. because we've only got a little bit of time, I would love to basically jump ahead a little bit, and we're going to have the four of you sure eventually find the Adventures Mart, find yep. out about this thing, and as you reach the Adventures Mart, Gail, that is when your Detect Magic spell you begin to hint the tent, the the sort of like you begin to get the the, the slightest element of that unfound that foul magic, that sort of unnatural magic, but only because you've detected it before. You think if you hadn't examined Tav so well when that spell was like on them, you would not have picked up on this. Right. Um, you get like faint traces of it, yeah. um, and it leads you into uh, the uh, the Adventurer's Mark Ball Spawn experience, um, which is where we are, which is where you guys are, and in fact we're going to jump back over to you guys now, um, just to kind of uh, wrap up this first part. You guys uh, enter that passageway, that secret door that you had found in the back of this cloning vat room. Uh, and it leads you down, uh, it, there's a stairway, once you move down the passageway there is this long spiralling stairway and the blood trails down it. Um, the blood eventually begins to kind of like, obviously whatever was being dragged, it has run out of blood or it becomes like more spattered and sort of like, you know, it's bleeding less profusely, um, so it becomes less and less. Um, still enough for you to follow as a trail but becomes less and less and it looks like, bing bong, like, like after tasting it, like can follow it like a like a like a like bloodhound. a like a bloodhound almost right. like kind of he's like told you he, he was useful puts his finger in it mm, big bong and then like that makes his way down uh, it seems it seems like very thoughtfully kind of processing it um, you eventually emerge into a long stone corridor with magical crystals embedded into like the walls you hear strange arcane machinery uh, that's behind the walls embedded into it this heat and vibrations of something thrumming nearby you also pick up shadow heart i think and uh Lazel, what's your passive perceptions at the bottom of your sheet it's an 11 an 11 so you don't pick up on this but shadow heart does mm. you spy that a number of traps would have been set up in this corridor but they've been disabled somebody has come in and has already disabled several of these traps um you see like trip wires pressure plates um magical arcane wards that would have like probably you know tried to blast you with magic but it's all been disabled um and then eventually you come across uh, a crossroads in this kind of corridor um it splits off to the two side chambers um and then a path that leads to 
like where you can see this dungeon sort of collapses, like some sort of earthquake or something has dislodged the earth and broken it away, and then you see another section of the dungeon a bit further on. Um, but as you do, as you reach the crossroads, uh, you can see one of them has a door that has been ripped open, like it looks like it's been burst open, and um, there is signs of combat, because inside a room in this to the, to the side of this corridor, you see a number of dead creatures, you see a number of demons, um, a few creatures called mephits, which are like elemental, kind of like flying, uh, conjured earth and magma and things like that, um, as well as one of those glass knights that you fought before. Mm -hmm. And it's all broken into pieces, but you recognize the face and the shield. Um, and inside this chamber, you see a lot of this arcane machinery, but you also see a kind of shimmering, opaque dome. And it seems to have sprung up from a ward on the ground. And inside the dome is a very injured looking drow elf. So these are the kind of purple, dark purple skinned, white haired elf. Um, they appear to be wearing this kind of green cloak. They're kind of nursing their side. They look pretty badly beaten up. Um, they kind of look over to you as they kind of turn and you see a very handsome male drow elf with this kind of lavender, uh, lavender eyes and kind of dark purple skin. And he just looks over to you and he just sort of says, Perhaps uh, I have some rescuers to thank. Perhaps I beg your uh, assistance. And he kind of like looks out and speaks very softly and like very intensely as he looks at you. Um, but that point is where we're going to end <laughs> this first half of the episode. Wait, what? What? <laughs> the D&D character... nerd has triggered. Oh my god, the ca my character doesn't know this, but I know who the fuck that is. And with that, we're going to go to break and we'll see you in part two. <laughs> <laughs> as we try and wrap up this little adventure. So we'll see you in a few minutes. Take care, everybody. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to part two of our special Baldur's Gate 3 cast D&D one-shot here on High Rollers. I'm your Dungeon Master, Mark Sherlock Humes, and uh, thank you for joining us after the break. We find ourselves deep in a sort of hidden passageway, a hidden set of uh, this kind of dungeon beneath the tourist trap. Uh, this tourist attraction dedicated to a bloody part of Athcatla's history. Um, you have found, uh, well, Lazelle and, and Shadowheart and their new companion, Bing, Bing Bong, the imp, have found a secret compartment and a passageway that has led them in deeper into this dungeon and to a chamber with a trapped drow elf inside of Barrier Dome. Meanwhile, en route, we have Asterian, Karlak, Will and Gale who have uh, pursued various different avenues, have been given leads and are on their way, making their way to Joaquin's Promenade to discover the secret of the uh, ball spawn experience at the Adventure Mart presented by Adventures Mart um, and make their way and reunite with the team. Um, and yeah, so Lazel and Shadowheart, for you guys, uh, you see this, this man, he has a kind of like gentle handsomeness to him, very soft features, long white hair, lavender, almost pink eyes, um, and you can see that he's badly hurt, and it looks like from the carnage in this room, he fought like mo pretty much every monster down in this dungeon, um, and but he seems to be trapped in this dome of magic, and you can see there's this arcane machine around you, there are crystals and runes everywhere. Um, and some sort of device that maybe seems to be connected to this 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 dome, this panel. Um, and then there's also some other things I didn't mention last time, you know, a quick glance. Um, so he looks over to you and kind of looks over and says, well, perhaps I won't starve down here. Uh, I hope that you can rescue me. Uh, and he kind of looks around uh, at you both. Um, you see that he has one scimitar in like a scabbard on his belt. Um, and then on the floor outside of the dome, it looks like another scimitar is laying on the ground, like it was like knocked away or something like that. Um, and there is also a black statue of a panther um, on the ground. Um, and uh, you would see that Shadowheart with your passive perception. I don't think Lazel would spot those two items, but you do see the carnage. And I would say, Lazel, <laughs> no, wisdom is not intelligence, my dear. Um, Lazel, what you would notice, you're a seasoned warrior. Yes. You are an expert killer, and you see before you this scene of carnage. Like you can tell that that elf in that dome is a like is a expert killer like they are a seasoned warrior they have butchered these like foes um you don't think that they're the one who dragged the bodies down here um this looks like they were 
you know, almost making their way through here and have fought loads of enemies, basically. Like, just by the cut marks and the scene of the battle and stuff like that. Um, but you can definitely tell that whoever that is, they are dangerous. Like, they, or they mm. could be a formidable foe if they, if they crossed you. But maybe they're injured. Maybe now would be the best time to strike whilst they're, you know, injured. Uh, something like that. I don't think we should assist you quite yet until you tell us what's happened. That is very understandable, a very reasonable thing to ask. Stand Straight. down, Shadowheart. I'll Straight take it from here. Why do you have to go in with the aggression? <laughs> Shadowheart, she said. One of you is called a, a peculiar name, oh, though. Damn it. Not that different. <laughs> <laughs> Not that different from some of my own aliases. But no, I'm happy to tell you what happened. I, a friend of mine asked me to locate some uh, kidnapped victims, some uh, abductees. Uh, I pursued the trail, it led to this strange, quite gruesome mockery of a tragedy that happened here a century ago. But I found the secret passage that led deeper down, uh, and uh, I fought my way through a number of monsters, demons, golems, uh, the creations of perhaps the, the dark architect of this place. And uh, when I fought them I was injured, I stumbled back and activated this trap. Can I do it? Deception check with guidance, mm. please. Yeah, are you trying? I don't trust this. No, so, are you trying to deceive them, or are you trying to tell if he's? Oh, deception. I'm trying perce so perce uh, insight. It's insight. insight. Yeah, so insight, insight is like to like read body language mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Perception is like noticing things. Insight is like, is somebody lying insight. to me? Is there right. something going on okay. here? Insight. Uh, so yeah, you can cast have guidance have on it. yourself. Um, I will say this, it's very obvious that you cast a spell, like you pray to Shah, you feel the magic fill you. So he knows that you cast some sort of spell on yourself, but then yeah, you can totally try and like get a read on his body language, absolutely. Sh should yeah. we? Oh, yeah, I yeah. think we should. Sure. He's injured, so, like, I'm yeah, doing it. Absolutely, so d20, and mm -hmm. then you're going to add your insight bonus on your character sheet, so your insight skill bonus. Five. And then you Ooh. get a d4 on top, because you cast guidance on yourself. Okay, great. Nice. Thirteen. Okay, uh, so is that total with your plus five? No, 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 that's 18. 18. And two. Two, so 20 total. Mm -hmm. You, Shadow Heart, you can see this man clearly. Whatever magic is going on, it's like almost like two-way frosted glass. He can sort of, he doesn't seem to be able to see you, but you can see him clearly. And you gaze into those lavender eyes. You examine his body art, his body language, and you can tell that this is a man who has killed a lot but it's never been, you, you get the sense of a gentleness, you get earnestness as well, almost too much sincerity. Uh, this is somebody who deception is not a natural fit to them. Okay. Um, this is, and the, even the way that they stare at you, there's just something gentle about it. Um, it would be Shadow very Heart, difficult. compose yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Bing bong and now this guy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No time for romance, Shadowheart. <laughs> I'm not I agree. anyone. I agree, and unfortunately, my heart belongs to another, but... Uh... Okay, I'm glad that's out of the way. <laughs> Stop embarrassing me, Nadel! <laughs> In front of the good-looking trowel. So, <laughs> do you know more of the enemies that you faced here? Um, I believe I do, yes. I believe I know the one who was responsible for the kidnappings here in Athkatla. Uh, they are channeling, they are using the people they kidnapped to power some sort of dark machine. I was not able to reach the heart of his laboratory, but based on my knowledge of history, I have a good idea of who it may be. Who? He kind of says, I will spare you the long version of the story. Oh, please do. <laughs> I believe that the creature that resides here is a replica a creation, a magical clone of a mage called John Irenicus. Well, fuck me. <laughs> uh, they were once the scourge of this city. They uh, had a labor laboratory here. They fought against the Baal Spawn. They uh, attacked the Cowled Wizards and nearly destroyed much of Faerun when they tried to assimilate the life of uh, an elven life tree. Uh, but uh, that was stopped many years ago. John Irenicus, the original, was killed. It seems that this laboratory was fit to create these mutant and, and disgusting abominations of life, these clones of uh, magically infused power. Um, I believe that uh, to be the true enemy here. What happened with our friend? We, he was floating in the air and he had leaky stuff and <laughs> then loads of these prismy guys that I can see the remnants of here came and attacked us. Why do you think that is, and does this have something to do with this John fellow? Well, 
Is your friend, uh, are they special in some way? Do they have power or uh, something that uh, others might desire? Yes, yes, you could say that. Uh, then that would align with Irenicus's uh, motives in the past. Irenicus long ago tried to um, steal the power, the power of Baal, the god of murder, from a chosen. Uh, they tried to take this power for themselves and uh, make themselves a god, essentially. Uh, if your friend is special, they may be trying to do this clone, is likely trying to repeat the actions of its creator. And where is the clone now? I can't say for sure. I believe that if I remember, it has been a few days uh, since I was caught here. Uh, the passageway continues and through a collapsed section. There is a continuation of the dungeon on the other side of that. I, I suspect beyond there, I can. I, I felt that the that we were getting closer to the heart of it uh, when we travelled here. So you did not meet this clone? No, not yet. I was. I was. Uh, I was fighting the denizens, the guardians of this place. But then I fell into this trap. A, a foolish and rookie error, I must admit. I'm afraid that I am quite badly injured, but if you were to release me, I would send word to my friend, um, and then I would pa I would jo gladly join you uh, once my wounds have recovered a little against this foe. I like him. Shadowheart, you're way too trusting, especially when you look into his lavender eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it seems like Gail is caught up in some spa procedure and the others just don't, don't seem to give a shit about what's happening here apart from us two. So, looks like we need all the help we can get. Well, if it alleviates you in any way, if you were to release me uh, whilst I heal my wounds, I would be glad to lend you the aid of a companion of mine to keep you safe in, until I'm healed. Who is this companion? Uh, they are a, um, a friend that I can summon. A friend that you can trust? Oh yes. They, she has saved my life many times. Yes. <sighs> Shadow heart. Well, the so lavender eyes can't help it. <laughs> the mechanism, and he points, the mechanism that controls the ward, this trap, is just there. Um, and he points to like a runic sigil with almost like a pulse of light around a rune. <coughs> and you can see a complex web of ley lines with different runes sort of surrounding it and things like that. Um, I was going to do a cool puzzle, but we don't have much time left. <laughs> so I'll show, you, I'll show you the cool puzzle. Uh, it kind of looks a little bit like yeah, this. It's a great cool puzzle. Wow. Um, um, and you would recognize um, now what languages does uh, Shadowheart and Lazel speak? It should say something. Common and Elvish. Uh, draconic and Elvish. Mm -hmm. uh, and Githyanki, surely. And Githyanki, yeah, yeah, you absolutely would. It's I, not I, I, I forgot to. I apologize. <laughs> I, apologize. <laughs> I forgot to put it on there. But I shall add um, it right now. <laughs> you can, you can have that for now. Um, Thank you. But uh, I would say that, uh, yeah, you guys are a little bit puzzled looking at this. Um, you can't understand puzzled. what any of the runes, sh runes say, um, and you're not quite sure how to manipulate it. Um, after spending a little bit of time sort of pondering it over, you begin to hear the sounds of uh, four companions loudly and. <laughs> Kind of, kind of following behind you, um, just because I need but you all guys where together. Where do you get those boots from? <laughs> I want you all together for the final. Um, do you so, yeah. you've enjoyed your spa, Gail? <laughs> well, it was interrupted, but you know, I've got enough done. Half um, the beard. Half the beard. <laughs> Half the beard's been shaved off. Yeah. Maybe he, he can magically Still sort of like yeah, claim the rest. <laughs> Uh, so you guys basically found the adventurer's mark thanks to uh, Gail's uh, detecting of, of the kind of like the subtle traces of it, the clues that you were given by Imowen. Um, when you speak to the little gnome guy at the front desk, he'll tell you that yes, this a fellow calling himself Moonraiser, a drow elf, came by and seemed and it was interested in the ball, you know, spawn experience. Um, Can we see the elf right now? So you guys walk in. You guys are like loudly on this conversation. You walk in. You see Lazel and Shadowheart like puzzling over this rune system yeah. and. Then you see the dome with the drow elf. In the I'm going to shriek as loudly <laughs> as I can and point to go. Oh my God! You're Trisidurin. Trisidurin. Uh, uh, he he kind of like uh, very bashfully is just like ah. Oh. Uh, I was hoping that perhaps I would not be recognized, but... Uh, I was sort of going, sorry, uh, 
Big fan. Oh. Anyway, um, so I have a lot of questions. <laughs> well, yes, I'd be, you know, I, I am indisposed, and he looks at the magical trap he finds himself in. Uh, I do not know if they are your companions. I can see, I can't see your details. I can only see sort of visages through this. They're not interesting, it's fine. Listen, when you do, I'm going to proceed to ask him as many fan person <laughs> sure. questions yeah, absolutely. about his adventures and yeah. all that stuff as possible until somebody interrupts me. Yeah. He, not now, Starian. He has <laughs> the power. Patience of a saint. He answers everyone. He asks all about you. It's very back and forth. You know, it's very. You're like we're best friends. We like, are. Yeah, yeah, I'm convinced now. Yeah, he's my best friend. Yeah, absolutely. And, he knows me better than um, and then yeah, so like anybody else, like I would say that like uh, for those of you, and especially Prince for those at home, because uh, there's a few like blank faces of like who is Neil talking about? Uh, this fellow is a famous drow adventurer called Drist Duerden. Uh, he is a very famous adventurer that is known all across the. the the, the Sword Coast. Um, many sort of tales and stories have been told about him. Um, and yeah, you guys, I think Gail and Karlak would probably know. Will, you've definitely heard of Drist. Mm -hmm. He's like the kind of epitome of what the Blade of Frontiers is like, you know, almost like a, you know, an icon to like sure. live up to. Um, I think that like you guys definitely would be like, whoa, this is pretty big. <laughs> it's, um, like, it's like if Will gets big, he goes, back of his mind. <laughs> we start forming an orderly cue that ends out of our pockets. Yeah, yeah. Um, does Karlak spot the imp? Uh, yes, I think that Karlak, I mean, oh. Bing Bong's just stood next to Shadow, in fact, probably like perched on your shoulder or something, right? Like, yeah. it's like kind of, so yeah, Karlak would that totally see the imp. Oh dear. <laughs> Karlak, Bing Bong, Bing Bong, Karlak. And, and Karlak's gonna say, get the fuck away from her. Uh, do you say in common? Uh, no, I'll say that in, f in Infernal, please. Okay. Uh, the uh, little imp kind of whips its head around you and it's just like, oh, no trouble, no trouble! And he flies up into the air, like, away from Shadowheart and he, he like, clearly holds his hand out. I don't know me, no business! I I'm not, I'm not in servants oh. of anyone! No, I, work at the, I work at the Adventurer's Mart! Yeah, they're talking in, yeah. They're talking in, yeah. They're talking in Infernal. So you all hear, <laughs> but he's just like, I work at the Adventurer's Mart! I'm the door guy, I'm Bing Bong! What's an imp? doing in Faerun? I got summoned and then the guy who summoned me died before he sent me back and I'm stuck here so I got a job at the Adventurer's Mart. It's the only place in the world. They call me Bing Bong. Does Carlack like, believe him? Uh, you can make an insight check. Let's do that before I kill him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't kill Bing Bong. There's a 10. Uh, plus one. Plus one. 11. I mean, oh. it's not, it's, I mean, imps are on the bottom rung. Of their nine hells, like they sure. are, they are treated pretty badly, yes. and you've including by Carlac. Yeah, including by Carlac. <laughs> and it's like, well, it's not imp. The story he said is pretty plausible. Like there are times when summonings go wrong, and like the demon or the devil gets trapped on the other side. Most people wouldn't probably trust an imp. Yeah. I mean, it could be that he's like, oh, I'm free of the nine hells. Like, yeah. I, yay, I can live a peaceful life. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. I've got eyes on you. <laughs> All right, yeah, no, no problem. I'm just. This is my friend. She was really nice to me. She gave me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, I might join the back of the queue to meet Driss. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mum told me all about him. I really like it. Yeah, like that. Yeah, you do that. Um, you have to take magic up, don't you, Gail? Yes, I do. You walk in, and first of all, this dome, very powerful magic. Mm. You can sense that the sense of this unnatural magic that you've been following is getting stronger as you go into this thing. But you also pick up two little blips. Mm. The scimitar on the ground in front of the dome very. and the little Black Panther statue, powerful magical auras. They are magical items. Mm -hmm. Orbs get in a little. Not going to eat the orbs get a little hungry. Been a long day on the Hengish stairs. Honestly, I've had a couple of glasses of wine. Nothing to eat all morning. Honestly, things happen. Yeah. Uh, we, I'm, I'm going to leave that hanging there. If you, um, you would like um, to I'm going to have that banter. You, 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 oh, you oh, so oh, 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 <laughs> Don't you well have it, that. Uh, okay, you know, you know, straight down the hatch. You know, that's straight down. Right now, because we can't see it, chat is exploding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, you pick them up. Um, and when you pick them up, before you have a chance to start, you know, sucking them dry, um, you hear a voice that calls out, this very calm voice. I have a way with words. Um, like, I, may I ask that your friend be careful with those? The, the panther statue is 
especially important to me. Can I? Can I meet? Because I'm. Because he knows. Well, yeah, he, he points out, and you like turn around, oh, yeah. I'm and you see Gale. I'm, 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 I'm immediately walking up to him and going, "Is just stop what are you doing with? I'm taking it off here." Unbelievable. Like I mean, yeah. I mean, do you want to stop like a staring? Like staring, trying to take yes, this off? Give it back. Okay. All right. Let's, All let's right. do this. So, so let's have an opponent, and this is going to be the best. Stop it. It's trips. No, it's not. If we if we could have an opposed athletics check from you, well, that's going to go great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is why it's brilliant. Flat Minus bite. one both, I believe. Minus one to Minus the one. We're yeah. really well. Okay, but do I have the power of friendship? No, I don't. No, he's no, not really no. my friend. No, no. no. Minus one. Oh, my way. <laughs> Uh, that is a 17. Oh, four. 17. Asterian, you managed to wrestle <laughs> both, uh, you I know. I yours, it's trips. <laughs> and you now hold, Asterian, you now hold in your hand, uh, Icing Death, the scimitar, which you know yes, is a I magical guess. scimitar. <laughs> yeah. You begin to see, as, as Asterian holds it, ice begins to form up the blade mm. and trail this coal of mist. And then in your other hand, an onyx black panther figurine. I'm going to, uh, once I've got away from him and then realize what I'm doing, I'm going to get, <laughs> oh, I look this again. Oh, and then I'm going to really think about whether or not I give it back to Tris right now, sure. and just sort of just just stand there, sure, holding these things. Um, uh, while you are standing there holding things, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you've been looking at these runes. You don't understand runes, but I think like Karlak and Will, <laughs> you guys would rec recognize that whilst they are not written in infernal or demonic script, there is elements of infernal magic used to create this warding trap. It's probably normally used to trap like outsiders, but it's been turned against the living basically. Um, and you quickly realize that actually uh, you can move this orb of power, but it takes a force of will to do it. Like you have to. Basically, use uh, the force of will to control this uh, orb around, and that no, the different runes. A yeah, force of will. Yeah. A force yeah. of will. Yeah. 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 Um, Very good. Very good. Very good. You would know that the runes are kind of going from the top is hold. In fact, if you want to hold that up for me, uh, thank you very much, Dev. Um, so the top rune is hold. Uh, the one to the right side is punish. The one to the left side underneath is uh, uh, expand. Um, the one beneath that is contract. The one beneath punish is vent. And then the very bottom one is release. So it looks like there's like a sequence where you can sort of move the orb around to uh, unle unlock the thing. And it just takes a force of will. Rather than doing the puzzle, you can just basically be like, I want to open oh, it. Oh, just <laughs> smash it, Karlak. Let's get this over. <laughs> smash it. it up, right? Learn from the Nautiloid. Don't smash it. <laughs> Not doing that again. That was very upsetting. Perhaps I shall smash it then with my... Great sword. Yeah, if you want to, you can totally like the machine. Oh, no, this no, this no, is like no, a, no, this is like a machine. Let's not do that. There's like all these like crystals and like runes and stuff on the sides. You could totally just be like, That's if you what want I to. Shall do. How okay. do I do that? You I'm gonna put myself in front her. of you. Yeah, yeah, you can both jump on Lazel yeah. like no. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. So uh, that would be athletics checks from all three Serious. of you, please. So this is D20 plus your athletic skill, and then uh, Bing Bong. Big roll. Big Nineteen roll plus five. Nineteen plus five. Oh, Sixteen. Four. Sixteen. Fine. You get the two of you, Lazel. That kind of you know, Lazel isn't as big as Karlak, but there's like this kind of really tight strength to that Sinewy Yankee toughness. frame. Sinewy. And she just yeah. throws you both off, and you can make a great sword attack against the machine, Lazel. How do I do that? So you're just going to make an attack as if you were attacking a monster. Yeah. So your middle column where you've got the great, great. sword. Yeah. Um, if you remember when you made the attack, so yeah. that middle area with a great mm -hmm. sword with a bonus. D20 plus that bonus. Okay. Oh, I got it. Oh, it's a nine. Is that the nine? Yeah. Yeah. Nine plus my five. So fourteen. I'd say that's a big. That's enough to. It's kind of set into the wall. It's not particularly hard. It's just tough to hit. Mm. But you do enough, yeah. And then if you roll damage for me, um, so two d six plus three for you. I think so that's your great sword damage. Am I doing with this one again? Uh, no. Wait. So you want two normal oh. dice. This is damage. So you hit and then you deal damage. Eight. Eight points of damage. You do enough. It's, I, it's eleven because it's plus three. Plus three, that's right, because oh. you add your strength to it as well. So right. it says on your great sword there. Um, knows what they're doing. I got you back. I got you back, sister. Thank you. The great sword smashes into the side. Like Karlak and Will, you're both thrown off as Lazel kind of brings this sword of bear, and it carves into the side of the machine, cleaving through um, some of the runes. And you watch as that orb kind of. There's a moment where the dome rapidly shrinks and like you see the elf almost like 
reflectively tries to make himself small in case he's going to be crushed. Then it grows big. Then it seems to like you see the elf like hold like he's being choked. Then there's a burst of lightning, and then the dome vanishes. Like the whole machine just goes haywire and just. Goes, You're welcome. <laughs> you see him kind of like smoldering a little bit from the lightning. <laughs> Whilst, whilst the methods perhaps were not to my choosing, I am grateful for the result. Um, thank you, thank you. I'm afraid that I'm still a little injured uh, to go on yet. I need some time to rest my wounds, and I must send word to Imowin <coughs> about what I've discovered uh, to send the Shadow Thieves. But uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, and he looks at you, and I, I'm glad to meet you all finally. I am Dristuard, and he'll come round, he'll offer a hand. Like, nice to meet you, nice to kind of like go through. So I don't even look at him. <laughs> that as he offers. Yeah, uh, may I? May I? It's just to hold them like that, and then he just he takes, takes them. them. <laughs> Should I heal his wounds? Oh, please, no. You will need your magical okay. strength for what is to come. This. <laughs> the like sound yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye! Bye. Okay. Now that I'm out of that dome, I will very quickly return to the surface, send word to Imowin, purchase supplies, food. I, I have not eaten or drunk in several days. I, <coughs> I must attend to that first, and then I can replenish my strength. But no, go ahead. If you can, whatever this, this clone is doing, you must stop it. They are harming innocents here in Athkatla. They are using them to power this sick machine that they are using, I think at least. Uh, and you must stop them. Uh, and likely it seems that whatever has drawn you here, this friend of yours you spoke of, mm. if you do not stop the clone, they will take their body for their own. And with power, this would be a great, a great evil to unleash on the world. Uh, I will return as quickly as I can, but to keep you company at least, and he holds the pantheronic statue up, uh, and he just says, uh, Guinevar! And you see that from the statue, this swirling black mist and smoke takes the form of a giant black panther. It's very... It's very old. <laughs> and it kind of nuzzles up against him, and he just like rubs the head, and he's like, ah, my old friend, I missed you. Um, and he says, like, Guinevar will keep you safe until I can return. Satisfactory ending. Of course. She likes it behind the ears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of like, it, it's un, uneasy around you at first, but as soon as you get the good spot, like, kind of like leans into it. <laughs> I, I've read the stories, I know exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm sorry that I cannot stay longer. I, I must go back to the surface to get something to eat and drink, but uh, I will join you as soon as I can. Good luck. And thank you once again for saving me. And he just smiles, kind of gives you this really kind of like disarming, charming smile, and then, whoosh, and in quick as lightning, like his boots seem to glow with magic, and he is out the door and gone in the blink of an eye, like whoosh, gone. I see why you like boots. Yeah, makes sense now. Alrighty. Uh, so, what's the plan, folks? Are you gonna head on, uh, continue on? So where are the exits from the... So this was like a side chamber. There yeah. is a continuation of the path that leads to like a broken chasm. Okay. But then there is another section of the dungeon beyond, like a wider, grander, older looking part of this like <coughs> complex. Um, there is another locked door, but you know, you're not sure. Like Dritz told you that like the source we of this tower was straight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, yeah. let's, let's go, go down. So, let's go. Yeah, is it wide enough for us to go... Like, in, do we have to go single column? Can we go no, no, together? this is definitely wide enough that like you guys <coughs> can, can kind of go in like you can probably go three by three. It's fifteen okay. foot wide. All right, so we can go spread out, but also in mm -hmm. better tactical than just being bunched sure. together. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right. Yes, okay. yeah. All right. Uh, you guys make your way, and following this path, you have to sort of jump across the chasm. You make your way down it. You find uh, these kind of stone pillars engraved with the visage of an elven man, but the face almost pulled up and tight. Their features gaunt, dark clothing, as they sort of stare ominously. And you see these kind of stone visages, and in each one is engraved words like greatness, destiny. Power. It's um, nice down here, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so we'll pass and admire these like great ideas. And then you arrive and you emerge. There's a large sort of set of archways, and as you do, I would like you guys to pass your miniatures and place you yourselves at the very far end of this chamber here, facing that room. The corridor opens up into a large cavernous space. Eldritch machinery hums behind the stone walls as a large glowing sphere upon a strange dais crackles with red lightning. 
Statues of ancient figures loom down from the far wall. Large vats and tubes rise out of the stone platforms. The blurred visages of humanoid shapes within twist and jerk as the magical energy in the space crackles and spits. A single figure, clad in dark clothing with tight, gaunt skin, looks up at three people shackled to the wall, the ominous structure behind him. As you enter, you see the figure slowly turn. What is this? Ah, the companions of the Balspawn. I see now. You have tracked me here. Interesting. And he looks at each one of you, and there is nothing behind those eyes. There is just malice and death waiting behind them. There's no anger or pity or even surprise. There is just passive, grim malice. He looks at each of you, and his eyes especially linger on Gale and Carlac. You both carry great power within you. You will serve to power my machines for many years to come. And he reaches up and twists his hand and you feel this force kind of encapsulate the archway that you entered, sealing you in the chamber. Uh -oh. You wish to stop me from taking the Balspawn's body, but I needed to complete my great work. You, he points, you, you, and you. You have come here to die, but the two of you shall be of great use to me. Sister, do not kill them, but you may kill the others. As you watch as one of these great glass vats hisses and steams and slides open to reveal a woman that bears a striking resemblance to the man not pulled taut again almost darkly beautiful elven woman with dark hair kind of she kind of stretches um do you want to come to me yeah <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> No! <laughs> yeah. Shit! <laughs> We're out of our depth! <laughs> so, yeah, come on by Yay. and Ooh. take a seat with me, <gasps> fellow DM, I guess, at this point. <laughs> yeah. um, as uh, the clone of John Irenicus and his sister, Bodhi, look down and, uh, yeah, what is Bodhi? He kind of like gestures to them. She stands and looks at each of you like your lunch. You have never felt less human in your entire life, and there's this glitter of playful cruelty, almost like she's pulling secrets out of your fears. And she just giggles and glances to her brother. <laughs> so I can play with the others. Yes, you may <laughs> indulge your desires. You can see that he is a stark contrast, where this, his sister, is all pleasure and, and sick, kind of uh, almost uh, hungry gaze. His remains impassive and uncaring. I shall deal with the mageling and the hellspawn. You deal with the rest. And with that, we are going to roll mm. initiative. Mm -hmm. That's a natural I've never, had, I've yeah. never had someone sat here with me. It's really Friends. fun. Yay! Oh, I've got one. I got a one. A, one. <laughs> no. a nine. Sixteen. Yeah. Nice. Ten. Just two. Uh, so, uh, Gale. What do we get for Gale? Three. Three. <laughs> Starion. Starion. Nat plus 20 plus back. three. So oh. 23. 23. Yep. Uh, Lazel. Ten. Ten. Uh, Shadow Heart. Uh, 18. 18, very good. Karlak. 10, baby. 10, baby. Uh, I'm gonna have, uh, I'm gonna have, well, I'll tell you what, you guys can just, yeah, it's the same time. Will. 
12. 12, alrighty. And then uh, my dear sister, Bernie, what did you get? Just an 8, I want to Just keep playing. Eight. Okay, very good. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we're both going to have to watch because Asterion, quick as anything, yeah. you are the first to act. So, now, I'm going to give you a little bit of like brief DM explanations yes. here. You can see that these kind of figures up here on the <coughs> map, these are chained living victims like you can see one wears the dress of a priest similar gale you would recognize the where gale and will clearly a sunni priestess mm -hmm. uh, that's been grabbed um the next one along appears to be this halfling thief um but you can see a dark magic is kind of flowing through his body um and then the last one that you can see is a uh, a, a almost radiant angelic like being like they have golden swirls on their skin long flowing hair oh no sorry uh this one would be a um a high elf uh, so they look like a cowled wizard but with their mask taken off they look like a they're wearing a cowled wizard's robe and everything else um and you can see that they're chained up here this device is this spinning orb with red lightning crackling around it and you gail that is the source of the spell on tap. That machine is what is channeling this spell at such a great distance. All right? Um, and that is that is some little information for you guys from the map. So, Asterion, uh, you are up first. Cool. Before I do anything, just a quick question. Are the three people being chained on the wall, does it look like something's being sucked out and we're drawn to the thing? It doesn't look like it yet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's just very <laughs> intentional point choice of words. Yes. Um, okay, I'm going to Bodhi. I know who Bodhi is. If I, if it's common knowledge, I would say that, that you have heard of, and I you would, know. and you would also have that sense that, yeah. like, you can yeah. sense the same undead spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to bear my fangs and go full, sort of, sort of a vampiric. Assuming that everybody knows that I'm a vampire. Yes. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go full God. vampire and goes, ah, I see. <laughs> A fellow kindred spirit, yeah. and how pretty you are, my darling. As I, as I, I'm going to dash forward and fire an assassination shot with a flaming arrow straight at Bodhi. Sure, sure, as sure, I sure. sort of scream this, as I shut this. Yeah, I will point out Bodhi's not surprised, but you will have no, advantage. No, but no advantage. Yes, you will, and you will, and yeah, you will absolutely get advantage, but no auto crit. I'm, I'm going to sort of. Yeah. Uh, is there like a, do you get disadvantage if you're on different heights? And uh, so I'm going to say that anybody who has the high one has advantage, but you don't have disadvantage. This is so she actually kind of. She uh, currently has like advantage over you because she's at a higher elevation. Yes. Interesting. I can't dash as far as that to get on the same elevation. So. Well, I don't know, you might be able to count it. So, right. uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then if you dash, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, you can get all the way up here if you dash. Yeah, I'm going to go to here. Sure. And so, actually, this bit is going to be like a hop, skip, again, that jump thing. Like yeah, sure, sure, sure. Past. And, like, sort of take a fire with a flaming arrow at him. Okay. Like nice. Each one of those squares is half on. Uh, five feet. <coughs> <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> uh, Might yeah. have fucked up! <laughs> yeah. Alright, so that's advantage on the roll. Uh, yeah, yep, yeah, you are first to act, you are acting before Bodhi, so you have advantage on the attack. Okay, so that is plus five. Uh, what am I rolling for? Uh, to hit. 18 so, is in the first one. Okay, let's see if you get any high. Second one is eight, that's 20, that's an 18 plus five, that's 23. I think that hits you. Yeah, so. that hits. Yeah, yeah. Um, All right. This is a flaming arrow, so mm -hmm. it's plus. It's D4. Extra D4 of fire damage, yes. There's no yeah. other enemies around us, so that effect won't matter. Um, but so it's an extra D4 of fire damage, and you get sneak attack, because you made the attack, attack with advantage. Well. So that means I get... That's 2D6. Extra 2D6. Plus 1D6, plus 7. Because it's... Oh, sorry. Plus 3... 3 plus a D4. Plus the, oh my god. Yeah. 3D6, right. D4, <laughs> plus 3. Alright, so... Three, Rogue's still a lot of damage. 3D6. Three 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 you have to... <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna need... 3D6. Plus a D4, <laughs> plus one more time, plus three. Yes. That's how this works. Yeah, that's how you got it. You nailed it. Okay, darling. <laughs> Sorry, I need some new boots. I'm perfectly made out of a vampire. Uh, yeah, not bad. That's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, it's fifteen, plus thirteen, uh, 30, eighteen points damage. Eighteen points damage. And some of that is fire damage. So fire damage. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Thank you. Um, so you see this arrow kind of streaks through the air. A serum fires it. You, do you want to tell us how you react? Yeah, it hits her in the shoulder and she just kind of... And you can see these needle sharp fangs and she just pulls it out of her shoulder. Adorable. Shit. 
Astarian, anything else on your turn? Yeah, I'm gonna get the fuck out of range because I'm you've pretty got, sure. You've got about two squares of movement left. I want to get yeah. this way, <laughs> so as far as like, sort of carrying on past. So you hit the deck, do a roll and carry that's on. That's about as far as you can get is yeah, right here. that's fine. Yeah. I'm trying to get no wing. Uh, no wink. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a shit. <laughs> At the end of your turn, Asterion, yeah. uh, Irenicus, the clone of Irenicus, yeah. is going to turn to Bodhi. Do not allow our name to be disparaged. Finish him, sister. And he is going to use a legendary action. So this is a special bitch. thing that monsters, like big powerful monsters can use, where they can do things at the end of your turns. Oh. And this one allows his sister Bodhi to move and make one weapon attack. Uh, so, move yourself as you wish, sister. Okay. Um, and make a weapon attack if you wish. Alright. I am going to... Does grappling count as an action? It would be part of the attack action, yeah. Okay. But so you, you, you know that your brother will perhaps help uh, help you with that in the future. Okay. In that case, I am just... This is very gonna... unfair. We're absolutely <laughs> teaming up on you. Yes, you're absolutely yeah. So, I am going to... Flip. She's <laughs> she's just cartwheeling and back flipping towards you like she finds this absolutely hilarious. Okay. And as she lands in front of you in this crouch, she pulls out this blade, this jagged, angry looking metal blade from her side and makes a a swipe towards you. Uh, Why is this so hot? <laughs> uh, so rolling on that. Yes. So that's just a regular uh, plus, yeah, plus five. five. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So twelve. Twelve to hit stone. Does not hit, I'm afraid. Oh. I'm class fourteen. So you kind of dodge kind of to the side as the blade sweeps I like, past. I like the idea as you sweep past, it's sort of like, I just go, oh. <laughs> 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 as you just sweep past. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I can't take a bonus. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I'll just stay here. <laughs> okay. Making awkward eye contact Making from awkward, a little bit very too close. Awkward, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, that is that was at the end of your turn, Asterion. Uh, we then go to um, Shadowheart. What is your dexterity score, please? My dexterity score is plus two. Plus two. Uh, what's the actual number underneath 14. it? Fourteen. Fourteen. Oh, unfortunately, the clone is fifteen, and I'm going to have him go first, and then you're going to go straight afterwards. So you watch as Irenicus, this mage uh, of famous renown, but this clone of him, looks up, turns to the, uh, let's say the, da, 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 um, I'm going to say the high elf, uh, and he goes, just reaches up, and he's like, "Your power, give it to me." And you watch as this spectral chain extends from the High Elf to his hand. And as it does, this power seems to flare into him. And you see the High Elf kind of shudder and kind of gasp with pain. Um, and then he's going to look around. You can see that he's channeling some sort of power. And he's going to look in your direction, Karlak. And he's going to say, you shall serve me. And he's going to cast Dominate Person. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a spell that will take complete control of Karlak and uh, kind of point her to like try and attack <laughs> stuff. Um, so if there's anything anybody has that they would like to do to try and destroy, uh, maybe it. something you've got. <laughs> oh yes, right. Maybe no, something you've got there. Right now. I would oh, never, yes. never suggest a Counter. player. Do something. Would you like to use your scroll yes. of counter spell? Just go up to that great big fiery ball, and that's fine. I just read it from that. Uh, so the way it's going to work out, yeah, because this is a spell higher than you can normally cast, um, and uh, also like you know, it's a contest thing. You're going to need to roll. I need you to roll a okay. d20. Yep. You're going to add three. Add three. And you need to beat a fourteen. So you need to get an 11 or higher uh, to do this. Okay. Um, as you pull the scroll out, you begin reciting the magical words, but are you going to be you know, capable enough to deflect this spell that he's about to cast? Very relaxed after the spell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully I'll get a bit of a... It's a seven. 
Seven oh, yeah. is, is not no, enough. Not, ten. not enough. So you watch as the scroll oh. crumbles, but you, whoever this is, they're they're stealing arcane knowledge from this elf, and it's far greater than your current ability allows you to kind of like counter. And Karlak, I'm going to need you to make a wisdom saving throw uh, mm-hmm. as he tries to dominate Have your hurt? mind. Huh? Have I been hurt? I'm not going to ask yet. about hellish rebuke, but let's. Um... No, this hasn't <laughs> caused you any damage yet. Yeah. No, no, no. So, um, sorry. Wisdom we, saving wisdom. throw. Wish me luck. <laughs> it's a four altogether. Okay. So you, we're doing you, well. We're doing you really feel well. this invasive <laughs> presence, <laughs> and you are next to Will, uh, and you basically receive this mental order to attack uh, Will, basically on your turn, um, and that is going to be his turn. Uh, and then we go to Shadowheart. Uh, right. Well. Okay. Wait. I've been zombified, mate. Sorry. Um, Now, I will say it's a concentration, so if you can damage him, he might lose his concentration on this. um, I'm going to. I think I'm going to go for Guiding Bolt. Oh, very good. Guiding Bolt. Who do I choose to do it on? Guys. That's controlling the barbarian. Bodhi? Yeah, Bodhi, yeah. Bodhi. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna do it as a spell slot. So, so yeah. you do it as a second level, yeah, a high level slot. Level. Okay. Go yeah. big. So going about, you have to roll to hit first. Uh, so it's using your, it might be on your middle sheet there, it might have like an attack bonus for Guiding Bolt on the middle, uh, kind of like where your weapons and stuff are. No, it's uh, story, it's be in the description below, I might have written it down. Uh, Shah's blessing. Sacred. <laughs> oh, sacred <laughs> flame. In that it's case, on your flame. second sheet, um, your spell attack bonus at the very top. Spell... Plus five. Plus five. So you're going to roll, you add plus five, and you've got to beat Bodhi's AC. Okay. On my d20. Yeah. Oh, other thing, you currently have uh, Bing Bong with you. I um, have Bing Bong! So if you would like, either he can act on his turn, I'll roll initiative for him, or he can give you the help action and give you advantage on the mm. attack. I, I'm going to go for yeah, giving for sure. me advantage. Yeah. Yeah. So he's like on your on your thing, and he's just like, eh, and he's pointing, trying to like help guide your aim, basically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. So yeah, this is you roll twice, take the highest. Uh, D twenty. Yep. D twenty yep. plus five. Eight. Oh, you get to roll twice and pick the highest. Yep. So like, let's hope Bing Bong comes through. Come on, Bing Bong. Twelve plus five, seventeen. Sister. That hits. That hits. Yes. Uh, and now you roll the damage. <laughs> so what's the card say of the damage normally? Uh, on At higher levels, when you cast the spell using a spell slot of second level or higher, the damage increases by 1d6. And what does it say about the normal damage in the normal text? 4d6. So Whoa, 5d6 damage. Nice, so you're actually going to need like a bunch of people's dice, basically. <laughs> yeah, going That's down. That's the real power of You might get one more. Anyone? Oh, my yeah. own, my yeah. own. <coughs> right, all, all wow. five Shard's of these. Yeah. All blessings. five of these, absolutely. Oh, right. Uh, I've got two sixes, so that's 12. Uh, plus 10 is 22. 22. Nice. Nice. You watch as this golden light, or this kind of like almost tinged with like an eclipse. There's like a darkness within it, and then golden light on the outside. Maybe just a silvery hint as well, as it shoots out as you channel this divine energy, and as it strikes Bodhi, it burns her. Um, as it kind of scorches her body as the radiant light. Thank you! <laughs> um, yeah, like Bodhi, so like, yeah, like you kind of feel this intense, like, rippling pain as the, the radiant energy strikes you as well. Are we um, out of combat? Does that move her out, or is she still very much alive? She is just about still in, I think. Not the most uh, her. <laughs> looking her, but still alive. Um, anything else on your turn, Shadowheart? Would you like to move? Uh, yeah, no, I'm happy where I am. Okay. I don't want to move. Can I do uh, a bonus here? You absolutely can. Yeah, can I... Um, MVP. Uh, invoke... No, a blessing of the trickster. As an action, you can touch one creature and give it advantage on stealth checks. I'm worried about Gale. Okay. So I'm going to give him... Uh, well, it has to be a creature you can touch. You'd have to move up yeah. to him. 
Ah, okay, fine, I'll move up to him. <coughs> okay, fine. That's right, move. Thank right, you. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to reach ah. Gail, so you start making your way towards him. You can always do it on your next turn. Okay, question. <laughs> yeah. Is the imp familiar now? Um, not quite familiar, it's just a good friend. It's <laughs> just a good <laughs> friend. To do it, to do the touch. Um, <laughs> no, just a good friend for this. All right, to move, yeah, move yeah, things yeah. along, if you're all good. <laughs> Will, you're up next. Mm -hmm. I want to cast Eldritch Blast. Yeah, who are you targeting? Her as well, okay. Wow. Finishing Alrighty. Yeah, finishing yeah so uh, you look up Eldritch Blast. It should be in your middle column as well that you'll have the bonuses and stuff. Um, so next to your weapons. Uh, yes. You have Eldritch Blast on there. Oh, on my sheet. Yeah, 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 I've got it. Yeah, you've got it there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it should be plus five, I think. Yeah. Uh, cool, so you're going to need to roll to hit. I'm sorry, Amelia. They're, I know. they're bullying you. So rude. Stop bullying my sister. I just wanted to roll the dice. Okay. <laughs> I've got an eight. Eight plus, or so is that eight total? Uh, eight plus five, would it be? Yeah, it would be add your bonus. So that uh, yeah, is 13. a 13. That does not hit. So you, yeah. <sighs> you dodge to the side. Yeah, she'll, she'll just kind of slide <laughs> And then. <laughs> Alrighty. He's uh, funny. Anything else on your turn? <laughs> I find his heroics rather can I cast another spell? tiresome. Yeah. Um, if it is a... I'll allow it for this. Normally you don't, but the D&D &D rules no, are complicated. No. But if it's a bonus action, I'll say yes. But if it's not a bonus action, then no phrase. Hmm. Okay, I'll... All right. I'll leave that one. You'll leave that one. Yeah. Would you like to move? No. Okay, all righty. In that case, <laughs> uh, Lazel and Karlak, what are your dexterity scores? 14. 14. It's the number below the uh, big number. Uh, on the very far side. One. Oh, uh, wait, no, no, wait. 13. 13. So, Karlak, you're going to go first, and then it's going to be Lazelle. Okay. Karlak, I'm afraid it's your turn. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No one took out the wizard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not yet. Fight him. <laughs> Kill. I haven't taken out my weapons, so I'm unarmed. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'd I'd say very that, like, on fire. You're just, like, unarmed. in a blind sort of, like, you have no control, so just... Um, but like, what's the story? Yeah. Am I under someone's control? Yeah, you are under John Aranis' control, and he's like, so "Yep, what fight can him." I... Oh, he's told me to fight him. Yep, yep, sorry, draw... mate. Yep, yep. <laughs> Beat him to death, How? basically, please. Um, I have to yes. unarm strike, yeah. but I won't rage. <laughs> um, That's fine. So it's, it's, it's it, yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's roll poorly. It's a ten plus a four. Fourteen. Two. Yeah. Does that hit your AC? Oh, uh, you're on top of your idea. Yes, oh, yeah, it does. It does. Right. Unfortunately, Karlak clocks you with a like a you know uh, a haymaker. <laughs> uh, how much damage did you do, Karlak? Two. Two points of damage. There you go. That's not too, not bad. too bad. Very well played. But yeah, you kind of punch, and at the end of the turn, you get to make another wisdom saving throw. <laughs> No. <laughs> so you're just completely mindless, just pummeling will, completely un unable to control your body. You're aware of what's going on, just no power. Lazel! The wizard out. Yeah. Right. I don't know if I can do this, but I'd, I'd really like it. to... <laughs> I'd really like to... Um, Set Bing Bong on fire and throw him at you. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. And yes. Uh, maybe you really perhaps use this it's jump fair. card. Okay. Yeah. So you, you would have to. So that's the <laughs> next. You, you have to. You have to cast. It's been lying here all day. It's been lying here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? Like you normally have to cast jump. We'll just say you can jump because it's right. just you jumping. It's fine. Right. Uh, we'll make it a bonus action this time around. When you say, how are you going to set Bing Bong fire? Um, well, I don't know. Perhaps, um, Put him on yeah, yeah. perhaps maybe a I mean, honestly, or... actually, holding him up to Carla yeah, yeah. would, would set him yeah. on fire. Yeah. yeah, so you pick, <laughs> you pick up Bing Bong, who's like, ah! Uh, you hold him up to Karlak <laughs> until he is on fire, yeah. it's an and then it's an you want to throw him at the mage, Ironicus. Yes. I so, love yeah. it. Um, if you can make, a, as if you were making an attack with a jab, do you have a javelin or anything on your sheet? I can't remember. Right I day, have a great it. sword. So okay, yeah, make it as if you're using your great sword. Unarmed strike, that's it. Yeah. You've not got a ranged. No, I think I probably didn't give her one. That's unfortunate. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, she's got one now. Well, she's got one now. She's got an imp. So, yeah, we'll say this is a thrown weapon. Uh, it is improvised, so do it with disadvantage. Improvise. So you're improvised. So you roll twice and take the lowest, but attack as if you're using your great sword, so plus five. Okay. So two. And seven. And a five. Five. You pick uh, you pick up Big Bong, you set him on fire, you hurl him. Uh, the problem is, is uh, whilst he is uh, 
sort of resistant to fire, the impact of being thrown full force like against the floor um, <laughs> kills Bing Bong. No! <laughs> and the I last knew I thing, hated you, Laser. <laughs> the last thing you hear, the l- Karlak, completely possessed by this mage, but still aware of it, he is in Infernal. I don't want to go back up! And then he just oh. splat. Um, as he splats against the ground and vanishes in a puff of ashes and smoke. And he's not today. dead, he's just gone back to hell. That's what they tell you. That's what <laughs> he's not dead, he's gone to hell. And again. now you kill her. Yeah, yeah I'll get you, you her. back it's for this, Lazel. Now, um, let's not turn amongst ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to move, Lazel? Sure, let's move towards you. Sure. So, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. You can get here, um, and then next turn you can, like. Can I jump up <coughs> to that? Oh, thing? actually, no, yeah, you said you've got yeah, a jump go spell. Do you, go. you want to jump up next yeah, to man, yeah, why not? Jump. Yeah. yeah, cool. He turns nice. around. Nice. Very well. I shall deal with you blade to blade. Yeah. Uh, and then that's going to be the Zogo. Bodhi, sister. <laughs> it's your turn. Oh, goody. So. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm not interested in you anymore. Thank God. And I just cartwheel <laughs> oh, no. across to here. No, no. Oh, no, that's not good. And uh, pop up behind her. Guess who? And I just shove the blade into your back. Oh, well. <laughs> She's like, I didn't realise that could happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, can it. I can take damage. Not rolling, just doing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. So you do okay. two attacks as well, though. I do. And I think you forgot that last time. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh shit. That's not, that feels very much like a headshot, so I'm gonna say. So this unfortunately hasn't come up on your side of the table oh, yet, right. but when you roll a natural 20, oh, a 20 on the 20 down. sided oh, dice, man. that's what we call a critical hit. That's really bad. And you, a critical, critical hit. hit. And you double the damage that you do. And unfortunately, Bodhi, when an ally is adjacent to the target, very much like a rogue sneak attack. attack. That's really awful, man. So So this is going to be... How much is this? This is going to hurt a lot. Yeah, this is going to be 3d6 plus 3, plus another 3d6. Would you like to make my 6 sister? Thank you very much. 5, 10, 14... Look at that! 28. 31. Oh my god! What's your... 14 doubled, 28 plus 3, 31. You're dead. Um, so, <laughs> Bodhi pops up behind Lazel, plunges the knife into your back, and you take 31 points of damage, Lazel. Are you unconscious, or rather at zero hit points? Very fucked. Minus Very fun, a few. Yes. So you, uh, uh, and you feel this blade as she catches like your internal autonomy, and you, we're not going to say you're unconscious, because I like you guys still being able to roleplay, but you are bleeding out, you are dying at this point. Yeah. So you yeah. kind of crumble to the ground. Um, you've got another attack, I though. have. Right, Holy shit. Um, can I use more movement? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You only moved that? a little bit, yeah. Oh, so I'm just going to flip back to a star end. Okay. He's Hello. nearby. It just seems like fun. So let's play again, shall we? Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> again, why is this so hot? <laughs> Actually, can I undo the move? Yeah. I'm going to stay where I am. You go. And, uh... Can I help her feel a little slighted? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to reach into a pocket and pull out a throwing star and hurl it straight at you, a star for a star. Fair enough. Oh, not very good. <laughs> Let's see this. Oh, that's not great. No. Okay, Switch catch it with your head. Yeah, ksing! <laughs> Grab it. God, you're annoying. Yes. <laughs> End of turn? Yes. All right. All right. Gail, just before your turn, uh, you hear footsteps. As you guys have been making your way down, uh, you see that drow figure, Drist, uh, kind of running up to try and join the fight, but he will call out to you. Uh, he will say, the engine, the machine, destroy the machine. You'll, he'll destroy him and the other. Destroy the machine. He's like calling this as it echoes down the corridor. Right. And Gail, we come to your turn. Um, Fortunate. Right. Okay. I'm uh, taking the subtle hint. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have to destroy the machine. <laughs> this madness. He's just what? No. No. I don't. <laughs> what can I use? There's so many things. Um, what's going to have 
the best thing. Well, the magic missile. I was going to yes. say because magic it cannot missile miss. Sounds good. It's good. Yeah. Be, what level would you like to cast it at? Oh, uh, the very highest. <laughs> so second <laughs> level. Second level. <laughs> All right. So what this looks like, we're not going to roll damage uh, because as you fire this gale, you kind of. What does it look like? This conjures like four bl- like uh, like projectiles <coughs> of magic. How does this kind of look uh, as you cast it? Great long fiery. Missile, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like darts, like throwing like, them out like javelins. Vicious thing. You watch as they impact into this machine, and that red lightning crackles and disperses. And you watch as the mage is like, "No!" As he calls out, "I will not be caged. I will not be contained." No, and he like looks back up, and as the thing cracks and breaks, this lightning begins to spin faster and faster until it eventually erupts. Uh, Asterion, you are immediately dropped to zero as this lightning blast hits you. But so are the mage and the vampire as they are incinerated uh, as by I, this blast as I of lightning. start dropping to zero, can I just like make eye contact with her and just go, oh! <laughs> <laughs> As this machine detonates, uh, and with this blast of lightning, as these two are incinerated, you watch as the prisoners are de-shackled from the the back wall. Um, you guys can run up. The Im- effect of the dominate immediately ends. Uh, Help them. God yeah, that. Will, you run up. You mm-hmm. can like uh, Lazel is like bleeding out, but the two of you and Shadowheart can kind of get them up. Um, and yeah, the machine is destroyed and you guys have not only succeeded in saving Tav but saving uh, another city from a future fate unfortunately we have to wrap it up this quick because it is time to end this little one shot episode uh, so I am sorry for the rather abrupt ending sometimes this happens you know we wish we had like you know all the hours in the day to play uh, but we've got to wrap things up here um, if we can just a quick sort of final goodbye if you can just say who you are maybe some places where maybe people can find you on the internet um, and then yeah, we will see see this out. And huge thank you to Mark. That was yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mark. And to me awesome. as well. Thank you. We'll get him next time, sister. We'll get him yeah. next time. Um, but yeah, so uh, Theo, if you just want to start, just the last, like, you know, who you are, how, who you play in Baldur's Gate, and where people can, might be able to find you on the internet. Yeah, this has been Theo Solomon playing Will Ravenguard, and you can find me on Instagram at under- Theo underscore Solomon. Samantha Bale, I play Karlak, and you can find me on Twitter. Uh, I'm Jennifer English, and I play Shadowheart, God's favorite princess. And uh, you can find me on at on Twitch, uh, Instagram, and other things. I think I'm all at Jennifer, Jennifer J English. I've been Deborah Wild playing Lazel. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Just. Such my name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still Neil Newborn, and you can find me on uh, playing a star in Darling. Uh, you can find me on Twitch, uh, Twitter, Instagram uh, at Neil Newborn. I'm Tim Downey. I've been playing Gail, and I'm on uh, Instagram and uh, Twitter or X, as it is now. Still, still nothing. Still nothing. <laughs> yeah. uh, at Tim Downey one. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, and then Amelia as well. I'm Amelia Tyler, um, and I've been playing Bodhi today. <laughs> and our narrator. Yeah. Sometimes. Oh, and narrator. Joint also. narrator. Joint narrator. Uh, you can find me on all the things, um, but I'm on I'm on Twitter and TikTok and YouTube and stuff. Wonderful. Um, and I've been your Dungeon Master, Mark Sherlock Humes. I'm the DM here over on High Rollers D&D. Uh, we actually have a brand new D&D campaign starting up, hopefully uh, later on this year. So if you subscribe to the channel, you subscribe to our Twitch, you'll get notifications on when that's begun. If you'd like to watch me running my uh, usual crew, not this lovely cast, but my usual crew, through our brand new campaign that's going to be starting up very soon. Um, and you can catch all of our previous stuff on YouTube. You can find me online at Sherlock Humes and many other places, and High Rollers D&D as well. Um, we are so grateful. Thank you, cast, so much for coming in and playing d and I hope you've had a lovely time. Um, and uh, a huge thank you to Larian Studios for not just making an awesome game, but also helping bringing us together and sort of making this happen, really, and like coordinating it all. So thank you, Larian. Um, and yeah, till next time, uh, gather your party, adventure forth, and play some D&D. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Yay. Bye. Woo.